welcome back everybody to uh Kurion. once again uh sorry a little later starting uh we had some technical difficulties uh jimmy's legs didn't work sorry Tim. <laughs> they work perfectly fine well apparently not but we are here now um welcome thank you for joining us once again i'm of course your dungeon master Stuart, and i'm joined by the rest of the party and we have the rest of a dwarven hold to explore so diving right into it last time our brave band of adventurers found themselves in the depths of Kalraz Horkel an ancient dwarven hold long since lost in the mountains of the Needling Spire on the southwestern coast of the continent of Kalraz Inside, they had found harrowing sights, strange uh, creatures that were once dwarves with blackened claws that skittered around on all fours, uh, shadows which manifested into the forms of creatures. And after breaching an invisible barrier seemingly put up by the priests of Moradin, found themselves in an even darker part of the halls. Chained to the entrance to his own uh, enclave, the twisted remains of the body of the Fane told part of the tale of the downfall of the hold and instructed the party that in order for them to get through, they would need the three blackened pieces of his heart. Journeying into the halls, they came across the Circle Court, uh, the seat of the Dwarven uh, Arcanists, the uh, wizards. Uh, in uh, the Dwarven Hall, that uh, there they found there had been a number of uh, conversations about lanterns, and a lot was written down here. Uh, diving through a hole that had been bored in the wall there, they came across a place where the blackness was and darkness was intensified, this sort of eerie uh, cavern within this otherwise pristinely chiseled room uh, where they fought a... Um, mysterious entity that uh, almost bested the party uh, or some members of the party with uh, the, the just the sheer volume of darkness around but after barely making it out of that with a single piece of the blackened heart they made their way to the hall of the high tinker where they found a second piece of the blackened heart and a strange anvil upon which they found a weapon a claw by the name of galkrish which tilly now wears until he had just hopped down off the anvil the broken anvil and that is where we will begin tonight's session stillness of the cavern giving a brief respite from the sort of uh cloistering darkness that you had been in for the past couple of days within this hall. Tilly now stands with this wicked looking claw on her left arm. That is very cool. Um, could you give us like the visual description of it again? Like when you say claw, do you mean what we think of when you say so, like, a claw weapon? It's not like Wolverine claws, it's um more like a gauntlet, kind of. It's, it's a gauntlet with talons, more than okay. anything. That's uh, what I was thinking. Yeah, it it's very square and angular. Uh, it's bronzen, fits over the forearm, uh, and it's very. It's got these sharp angular claws on the end of each finger, and it sort of it's strapped round. Uh, and on the back of the vambrace, uh, in amongst all of the the bronze, uh, is uh, the insets of purple obsidian on the back of it okay yeah i think i'm just kind of flexing it around and getting used to the weight like mm -hmm. it's not exactly the kind of weapon i'm used to using yeah but you are proficient in it thank you good yeah <laughs> i mean it'll it'll make your punches a little more effective i imagine well i mean it's not really a, a punching thing you know it's got sharp bits ideally when you punch someone uh you know it's good form not to have your fingers out like that Yes. But you, you could know. totally rip someone's heart out like this. I mean... That's a, that's a weird leap to make. Yeah. But not inaccurate. 
Wait. Thank you. I mean, probably not. It's you know not my primary target, I guess. I mean, if you want to hold on to something, maybe it can help with grip. I do hold on to a lot of things. Mm. So we're going to find that last piece of heart. I guess. Yeah, we should probably do that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm still clutching onto that broken bit of anvil that I've got. Yes. Keeping hold of that. And I'm yeah. going over the uh, crossbow to see how I can figure it all out to see how it works. So do you guys want to take a quick short rest to figure out all of the magic items you've got on that? We could do that, yeah. That seems smart. Would you like to do that? Yeah, sure. All mm-hmm. right. So I assume that you will be attuning to the crossbow? Yes. Vernon? All right. So there is your crossbow. Uh, during the short rest, though, um, I'm going to take the ring that I found back on the road, and I'm going to hand it to Namari. Hmm? So this ring, I think, would be better suited for you than me, because after what we've been through earlier today, just take this, you'll want it. What is that? Is that the store? Uh, no, it's interesting that one. What is that? What is that ring? It's um, the ring which uh, has the image of like a, a shield on top of it. Yeah. It's the ring oh. of the shield. So. Um, are you sure? Oh, yes. Thank you. Uh, okay. So you no longer have that. Uh, you. The Mari has that. The Mari has that. So, as you all take some time to uh, attune to your new weapons, um, the plus one Tinker's crossbow of uh, action, uh, and Galkrish. Uh, Tilly, I would like you to make a charisma saving throw. Oh, oh, Jesus. <laughs> Tell Just me in case you need it, everyone got a uh, five from Song of Rest. Hey! Uh, Twelve. Okay. So, as you are there and you're trying to get um, used to uh, the sort of feel of the weapon, uh, the way it holds in your hands, uh, you, you think you've figured it out and you think you figured out what you can do with it. And then... In the back of your mind, you hear, ah, it's been so long waiting. It's good to meet you, but I would keep quiet about this if I was you. And you feel a strange compulsion to listen to this. Gonna do my real best to shut that out and not listen to that. Uh, I imagine, you know, it's probably not the first voice Tilly's heard <laughs> over the course of her travels. Probably got real good at shutting voices out before. We'll talk more soon. Pretty sure I remember you saying last session, but there was nothing wrong with this one. <laughs> You hadn't attuned to it yet. It's the last time I trust you. You trust me. <laughs> so, you have your new weapons. Uh, you have your attunements. Um, attunements. You have attuned to certain things. <laughs> uh, where would you like to go now? To a land without weapons that talk to, to, uh, to a land without weapons that talk to our dumbest party uh, member, please. <laughs> <laughs> um, we really only have one way left to go, right? Yeah, I think we'd so. Ag- yeah, we had agreed we were going to go to the upper clans, if I recall. Mm-hmm. Uh, it sort of made sense, yeah. Okay. Also. So- um, just while we were doing the rest, were there any other pieces of the anvil around? Just out of curiosity. Uh, very, very large bits. Only big bits. Only big bits. Yeah, it's right, sort okay. of. Um, think of like the stone table. Right. Okay. Fair enough. Split. Then I won't be slipping a piece of that into my bag. No, only one sliver came off. Mm. So. I, I like you have it. 
uh, who said I was going to be let. Uh, never mind. Words are difficult right now. <laughs> Wait, the bard is having trouble barding? Yeah. Yeah. That bird's well. <laughs> it does. So, you all make your way back onto the boat and glide across the pontoon to uh, the uh, over uh, the entrance way to, of this cavern where you make your way back up the long winding stairs and find yourselves once again in the house of the high tinker and anything else you would like to do in here before you head to the gold hall uh are there any like notebooks or something around that is left behind because i know i've got the journal but are there any other like notes laying around uh, there are various forms of notes yeah is there anything particular that, you, that you're looking for just anything that looks vaguely interesting that's a very it, i know it is but in terms of like hmm this guy was supposed to be really clever and invent things maybe he's left plans for things all right, make an investigation check for me. I thought we had already like fairly thoroughly burglarized this person. <laughs> we did. Uh, investigation, did you say? Yes. It's going to be a solid seven. You solidly don't find anything that you haven't looked at before. Cool. So, you make your way out of the house of the High Tinker and back to uh, the entranceway where the tall ceiling with the crystal and the uh, flame behind it is that creates this watery effect, effect across, the, uh, across the hall. Across from you now lies the other way that you haven't been yet. You see that it is a tall corridor, uh, but it is a lot wider than the other side. Uh, and Already you can see there are pathways that lead off the sides and up, switch backing to various different abodes built into the walls. But the main corridor continues on beyond that. Um, does Gun have like any idea where we're headed specifically in here? No, I don't I don't necessarily know the layout. Everyone's different. As far as I know, anyway. We know we're looking for the third of the most important lot. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna it's gonna be a bit more loud, mm. bombastic, elaborate, fancy, mm. noble yes. and dignified. That's it. That's the one I was looking for. Mm. You don't seem to be a fan. I have no beef with nobility. Um, we did talk about like how higher in the, the place was better, so we should probably. Did you say some of the paths like went up to it? Uh, yeah, but you can you can make out on the edges of your drift club that these are just you saw similar versions going down the other hallway. It winds up to various different houses, just small houses that are built into the uh, sides okay. of the walls here. So rather than it being spread out. Dwarven settlements are spread up, and there's the major corridors where everything goes. And then, imagining it like skyscrapers on the sides, but built into the walls rather than built up. Okay, and what we're looking for would probably be a bigger, more clear entrance than those. Mm. It would be, yeah, it would most likely be at the end of corridors. Okay, uh, I'm good with sticking on this main corridor then. Think less cul de sac and more gated community. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Isn't that dwarves in general? <laughs> yeah, a gated community. Yeah. The gate is a mountain. Mm. Yeah. So, I mean, you can't be a real dwarf unless you've read all 50 issues of dwarf comics. Hashtag not all dwarves. <laughs> dwarf and gatekeeping, you know. So, <laughs> not all dwarves can read. <laughs> <laughs> no implications. <laughs> <Not the same. laughs> Great. <laughs> you continue down this corridor then you're just going straight down it 
And as you journey down here, um, you can see large stone carts uh, laden with long spoiled barrels of food. Uh, you can see uh, there are trinkets, uh, general wares. There's one that looks to be filled with mining wares, pickaxes, helmets, candles. Uh, and most of them are dilapidated and run down. Many of them have been destroyed. Uh, some look to have been poached, either pilfered from. Um, and as you get further in, uh, it starts to become more and more uh, of a f less abandoned and more taken, more... Uh, it, it looks like this was a sort of looting that would happen uh, in a catastrophe uh, in here. And now, eventually, the corridor begins to widen out into a large open hall filled with buildings, actual buildings at this point. Uh, and you can see hanging from a few of them nearby are uh, shop signs. And you see that many of these are all large numbers of buildings, but a good number of them are destroyed, burnt down. You can see the charred remains of wood even now uh, left behind. Uh, and it's just dark and quiet. This is the only place you've seen in here where there's been this element of actual destruction rather than uh, simple decay. And this is the Gavel Hall, the center of the Dwarven Market. This is where all of the goods would have been stored and traded between. Uh, I guess I start like picking over some of this rubble mm. uh, and say this do this doesn't really mesh with anything else we've seen. Everywhere else it looked like this kind of took them by surprise. Or at least it was it set in so slowly that people didn't panic, I guess. Yeah. I'm keeping an eye out, by the way, watching our surroundings. Okay, no, I'm definitely not. Yeah, make a perception check then, Willem. Yeah, Tilly, I guess maybe that's probably down to the fact that all the stuff worth taking was probably here. Uh, that's a 16. Maybe. 16, okay. Yeah. Um, you get the distinctive feeling, Willona, that you are being watched. Mm, that's nice, that's good. Um, so guys. Uh, something mm, up? Uh, I feel like we're being watched. Now, what aren't we in here? I mean, that's fair, but like... It, does it feel like the same kind of like the the creatures that were watching us on our way to the temple? Does it feel similar? Yes. Oh, never mind. I think they followed us. Shit. Well. I want to look around for like bodies or weapons, the signs that there was like a battle here rather than like something that was okay. burnt down um, during looting. Make an investigation check. Oh, good. Yeah, she's real good at them. Who's she? Seven. You can't seem to find anything like that. You pick through and it mostly just seems like burnt rubble and such. Um, there's not much left of a lot of the places that, are, that aren't standing anymore. Uh, um, should I roll as well? Because I did say I was picking through. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. Ooh, that's significantly better. Uh, that's a 21. Hey! Nice. So, as you spend some time looking through here, um, the stuff that you're finding is not representative of the sort of dwarven crafts you've been told about before, whether that by, be by gun or on your travels. If this is the this is cheaper, more run of the mill, you don't find any no, any notorious weapons or any signs of uh, battle here, but you do begin to figure out that this is the perhaps the more standard of dwarves were here, the less noble, the less rich. Um, you also find that there are very few of these eerie, eerie round lanterns that you've been seeing across the upper halls here. There are a lot less of them in the rubble that you find here. Ah, okay. So I, I got a theory going, Hogan. Um, let me mm. know if this matches up with like your whole stuff. But like all of this, all the stuff here looks 
Uh, not not cheap, but not like the real good craft stuff that you go on about. Mm. So I'm guessing this is, you know, more my kind of folk down here. Uh, and I guess we couldn't afford a lot of those lanterns. Yeah. Which I'm guessing means the descent into not being a whole well held together hold was very quick here. See, that makes sense. If if it was the, the upper lot that had the lanterns and stuff, then yeah, then if they went mad, then the common folk, common folk that didn't have them, they wouldn't be affected by the madness of the lanterns if that's what's driving them mad. Yeah, I'm, I'm guessing when the lights started going out, the people with more lights mm -hmm. lasted longer. Yeah. We've got to get up there then and check it out. That's what it is. Okay. So you're making your way in deeper into this place. Uh, you would know that the gold hall, which uh, sits at the center of the gavel hall, because dwarven words don't sound as good in English, in common, um, is it's at the center of the gavel hall. And that's like, uh, imagine the world's largest auction house, but, but with the out the exterior of a casino. Ooh, fancy. Generally what they look like. Matt, can you imagine someone doing it with like a heavy, stereotypical dwarven Scottish accent doing like the auctioneer call? Oh my god. <laughs> I can, because I've been to an auction in Scotland. It was wild. So Adding that to my bucket list. You continue in now, and the feeling of being watched uh, develops very quickly into a certainty of being watched, as you see more of these creatures that you'd seen before, that you were first attacked by when you came in here, begin crawling up the walls, peeking over the tops of the ruins here, watching you from every angle. And then for a time, they vanish. Many of them aren't there. And as you walk through the ruins here, suddenly one of them creeps out at ground level from behind one of the corridors, head twisting around, and at that point you see the ashen blackness begins twisting from that creature's eyes. Do we so all see it? You all see it as it just comes around the corner. Is it like coming towards us? Or no, it's it just, just sort of sat there. Okay. It's got it's his sat. claws on the side like that. You see now the claws are beginning to have those ashen flakes coming off them as well. What is that? Think... Is that something? Do you think I'm like scavengers or something? They, they attacked us that first time, but mm. then they just kind of ignored us. I have my sword out ready anyway. Another one of them comes from out from behind, and this one's eyes are flickering as well. I mean, if they are scavengers, we should probably be worrying about something else right now. A they're kind of circling. Appears out. I'm reading an Eldritch Blast. Are they all coming out from the same direction, or are they from multiple directions? From multiple directions, surrounding you. Oh, Some okay. of the, you see now another one peeks out. This one's eyes are not ashen, and another one that's not ashen eyes. Another, and then a fourth one with ashen eyes steps out. This one just not even using cover at all, just steps out into plain view. And you see the corners of its mouth start twisting. We should fight back. As its mouth just begins to open, sharp teeth. <sighs> Don't think they're friendly. Uh, I'll shout in Dwarvish. Stop. The one in open just lunges at you. <laughs> oh. it makes an attack roll against you. You should fight back. Yeah. Uh, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. That, that would be a seven. <laughs> yeah. That's That'd a bit miss. <laughs> yeah, you step to the side as this creature barrels past you. <laughs> and just scatters, uh, scatters across the... Uh, 
Can I blast oh. it at that point? Because I had it yes, ready. You can. Yeah. I would like everyone to roll when you're still. Ah! Uh... Surprise. Jesus. Hey, that's alright. Yeah. Uh, I'm one doing is... good. The other doesn't look, I think. One is over 20. 24. Jesus. 20. Four. Yeah, that hits, yeah. And the other and one? And the other is 12. Uh, misses, unfortunately. Yeah. I'm gonna hex it as well, just... Can I do that? Okay. On a reddit action? As a uh, no, 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 on a reddit okay. action you only get... Then just... That's... Yeah. Ooh, nine. Plus... Five. Uh, Fourteen damage. Fourteen damage? Okay. A uh, quick question about the shield master ring, um, mm -hmm. the shove attack, the shove action. Is that only when I when I cast the thing, or is that any bonus action? What do you mean? It says uh, as a bonus action. You can cause an ethereal shield. Yeah. You can, you can. It's separate lines, so it's separate effects. Oh, okay. You can spend three charges to cast shield. Yeah. Or you can spend a charge. to do the shove attack. Oh, I see. Okay, uh, that one, each of them. And Tristan. Like that. All right. I will bring you all over. And I would like initiatives please 25 to 20. that's a good start 15 to 20. 19. 19. Right. 15. uh i was muted when i shot at 22 i think yeah you were yeah my bad all right um so that's run first yeah tilly um who said 15? Me. Mari. Okay. Uh, 10 to 15. Uh, 14. 13. Okay, okay. Uh, 5 to 10. Really? I got a four on my initiative. Oh. Yeah, good job. <laughs> I rolled a two on the die. It was great. Well, technically, it could have been worse. It could have, yes. Only technically. Okay, so as the creatures begin to surround you from all angles, uh, I would like Ronan to go first and Tilly, you're up after that. Uh,. I want to take the guy, the one right beside me is the one with the ashen eyes, correct? Yes, the ones with the ashen eyes are the ones that are the grey coloured tokens. Uh, can I, I want to take three steps back. Okay, so it's going to uh, get an attack of opportunity on it? Yep, yep. Okay. Uh, that will miss, that's a nine. Okay, and then I'm going to use the new uh, crossbow and just unload two bolts into him. Go for it. Make both your attacks. 18 on the first. Yep, that hits. So uh, that's a 10 plus um, 15 points on the first. Uh, okay. Then you can do move or uh, attack, move, attack, but you can't do attack bonus action attack, right? Correct. Yeah. Okay, so uh, Hunter's Mark will go on at the end of this turn. Uh, I'll just run second attack. Okay. Uh, 25. Uh, uh, that will hit, yeah. <laughs> and that will be 15 points again, but okay. that's with Colossus Slayer, so that's horrendous. So uh, you step back and the creature swipes at you, but you dodge out the way of it. As you do, you pull the, uh, you, you pull the uh, string back on the crossbow and fire two bolts into this creature the first one slams into its shoulder and you see the strength of this weapon as it slams the arm back and you hear 
uh, the upper uh, portion of the collarbone just break. You just hear the snap. The second one hits straight in the center of the sternum, and you, it just pierces straight through the sternum bone. Uh, and this, the creature just... Uh, and just collapses down front forward, and you see as it's the front of its chest just caves in because of the, the shattered remains of its, its sternum no longer holding together its ribcage. Uh, that will that will kill it, and that will end your go, which brings us to Tilly. Uh, how tall are these walls on the map? Uh, it depends which wall you're talking about. Uh, like the T-shaped thing that I'm sitting next to. Uh, so here and here, uh, those are around two stories high, um, and they slowly dip down to around three to four foot high. Okay, so probably not something I can do sick vaults over. Unfortunately not, no. Um, of course. You can uh, barely case, six volts over a pebble. Well, that's rude. In which case, I will help us get this area secured. So I'm going to go 5, 10, 15, 25. Uh, 15 doesn't go to 25. I'm going to mm. move over here. Yeah. Uh, and probably still feeling like weird having two open hands in combat. I will draw my short sword in my right hand on the way over. Yep. Uh, but then I will give a go at clawing it with this new cool hand I have. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's going to be a natural 20. That's a good fucking start. Okay, yeah. It bodes well. Um, I don't get sneak attack here, right? I don't have Unfortunately, not really. Because you're not an assassin. Okay, so it is a total of uh, 13 slashing damage. That's kind of okay. Right. 13 slashing damage? So you just reach out towards this creature and you just tear into it with this claw and you just feel underneath your grip you feel it go slick as you just tear through this creature uh and it's just this black blood just seeps out all over your forearm yeah i imagine it still feels kind of clumsy doing like a slashing motion for the first time it feels a lot less clumsy than you were expecting almost as if your hand is being guided in some way oh, and it, you feel this twists towards the vital organs of the creature okay that is cool told you no one else realizes this, of course. Uh, I am done with my turn. Okay, and as you end your turn, I'll bring us to Namari. Uh, you're up next, by the way, Tristan. I am going to... Uh, use my movement, I think, to get over here. And attack that guy. Okay. Just blast Eldritch Blast this time. No hex, because I think the last time that didn't work. It's a cratic, but I'm not sure. I'm not going to risk it. Mm, one is 22, the other is 13. Both hit. Mm -hmm. uh, the second one just hits. 7 and 9. Uh, 26 damage. Okay. So as you. Uh, run to the side, you extend your hand and you see that familiar uh, lance of dark green energy, but now twinned lances of dark green energy strike into this creature. As it's perched on top of it, you actually knock it uh, off balance for a moment. And as it scrambles down the wall for a moment, it pulls itself back up to the top. You can see the, the heavy bruising already starting to come forward from your blows. And that will end your turn unless you'd like to do anything with the bonus action. Yep. All right. Brings us to Tristan. I would like to uh, to move up to here and to this particular creepy crawly. I'd like to shout out what they call a dwarf on a high horse. Unlikely in Elvish, hoping that Gun can't speak <laughs> <laughs> and cast Fisher's mockery. I don't just say that in general. It, it's to mock. Yeah, yeah. Your, your action is to insult it. Go ahead. All right. So that's uh, 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 wisdom. I don't speak Elvish till so you get away with it this time. Hey, I was either going to say an Elvish or Halfling. Is it what size? Five, so that does not beat your DC. It takes uh, 2d4. 2d4 now. Yeah. Because you're level five. Yeah, boy. That takes uh, four points of psychic damage. Four points. And if I'm if I'm not mistaken, that's one charge in the ring. That is a charge in the ring. Yep. Cool. So the creature 
has never spoken Elvish in its life, does not understand at all what you are feeling, has not really felt any emotion for a long time. You can see it looks kind of sad for a moment. It looks kind of sad. Just got that sort of dejected look to its face. And that will end your turn unless you like to do anything with a bonus action. Um, or move anywhere. As a bonus, I'd like to inspire Gun and say, that was a lovely compliment I just gave all dwarves. And a wink. And, like, finger guns. All right, that will bring us to you, Gun. <laughs> Tristan's word, she'll be like, wait a second, he never says anything nice about dwarves, fucking wanker. That'll feel her rage, which she then goes into. And then uh, I'm going to sprint towards these two nerds up in this top corner and do some smashing. Go for it. And I have advantage, right? Because they're undead. Yes. <laughs> oh, God, I won't use that dice again. But hey, natural 20. <laughs> Let's not use the metal dice because that sounds like the apocalypse. Okay, so that's my first attack. So that's a natural 20, which means that's 4d6. Mm -hmm. Uh. 19 slashing on the first attack. Against which creature? Uh, the one above me. Okay. And then, uh, is that one still standing? It is, yeah. Um, I'll hit the other one though, just, just to... You, that one's just out of your reach. It's I'm... on top of the building. Alright, okay, well I'll hit the one that's right in front of me then. Yeah. Again. Um, so that's a 24 to hit. That does hit, yeah. And that one is. Sixteen slashing damage. Fucking hell, that was really simple maths. Why was that so difficult? So your first strike connects with the creature and you just almost knock it off its feet with the first one as it topples down onto wall fours for a moment. You look up to the one above you and are like, ah, and just swing down onto this existing creature, unable to reach the other one, just carve its head off as it tries to stand back up again. Tight. And that will end your go, which brings us to their go. So this one here next to you, Gun, is going to clamber down the wall towards you uh, and it's going to strike out at you. With an actual one, so that misses. This one here is going to clamber over onto that one. That one. Clamber there. Clamber there. Clamber there. So, uh, one of them's going to strike against you, Tim. And that's a nine. That doesn't hit me. New dice time. Uh, one's going to strike at you, Brennan. So, that's a seven. Didn't see Namari. That's a natural one. <laughs> the ashen eyed one is going to strike you, Namari. Hey, that's a 18. I could just mess you up by using that shield ring just in principle. You could? I'm not going to. Okay. <laughs> that was a good round. So you take um, uh, 12 points of slashing damage, and I would like you to make a constitution saving throw for me, please. I should have. Oh, it's that tiny thing again. Oh, for fuck's sake. Uh, 11. Yeah, you don't want to get tongued by these guys. 11, you actually make that. Uh, as the I mean, I'm not king shaming, but just, what? Uh, it's just inserted into the wound, and it's you can feel the poison starting to just sink in but you pull away and you just feel the tongue just pull its way out of the wound you go away i'm sent to this uh one of them's going to attack you uh willona that that's an 11 uh, and then the ashen one against Warning you flare. okay well i doubt it's gonna get any worse than that it, it didn't get worse than that but it still wasn't great uh, that's an eight altogether and um, then the 
last one is going to move and attack you as well, Wilona. I got you. Um, that's a 14, so that misses as well. So as three of them just charge you, Wilona, the battering against your shield, you flash warden and it holds its eyes and uh, swipes aimlessly at you, and you just stay surrounded by three of them now as they just harmlessly clang against your shield. Uh, the rest of you are just caught in combat with these blocking blows, uh, pushing them away, uh, just managing to fend off these creatures amazingly. Malona, it's your gram. All right. Uh, so <laughs> I'm going to use my last third level spell slot, and I'm going to cast a uh, flaming spear basically right behind this lovely fellow here. Okay. So... Uh, I'd like to move it towards him, but I think it's going to stop basically where it is anyway. Yeah, but if you slam it into him, you do get the damage from it. Right, that's what I was thinking. Yes. So. And since it's at third level, it's 3d6. Uh, that is... A moment. Have to make sure that it's not adding anything else. Right, so that is just 10 points of fire damage. Okay, uh, dexterity saving throw. Yep. Is uh, DC fifteen. Twenty. Oh well, all right. So five points then. Five points of fire damage to that one. Okay. All right. And would you like to do anything else with your turn? Um, not really. No. Okay. Um, so that will end your go, which will bring us to top of the round again, Ronan. With uh, yeah, I'd like to take another two steps back. Uh, which will give an attack of opportunity. Yeah. Uh, that's going to be a 19 to hit. Uh, that will hit. Okay. So you take... Come on, let's go. Let's go twice. Wow. Uh, you take four points of slash damage, and I'd like you to make a constitution saving throw for me. Uh, 20. 20. All right, yeah. As the claws rake across, you feel that black and poison start to sink in, but you shrug it off as you move backwards away from the creature. Uh, then I will attack this creature behind Waluna. Okay. But I'll shout, hey, Waluna, duck! And I cast Hail of Thorns and fired everything there. Uh, okay. So uh, everything has to make a dex save uh, if I hit. Okay. Um, that creature be... does have half cover. Uh, that'll be a 25 to hit, 15 on the die, plus 10 yep. from the crossbow. Do I yep. have to make a dex save as well? You yes. Do. Uh, so there's three creatures around there. Um, fail, fail, and what's your DC? Uh, it would be 15. 15. Okay, so the, uh, the Ashenide one passes, the other two fail. Okay, so on a fail save it takes half as much damage so it takes normal uh weapon damage which is yep. a d10 yeah so and then colossus slayer because he's been hurt by Waluna. uh yes uh, yeah six I uh so six on that by the way okay it's 11 points of damage from the weapon attack okay so and then uh then three damage three to all, all right. three of them Yes. Okay, and free to you as well, Valona. Yep. That stings. And so. then, oh god. No, go ahead. Finish your turn. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I was just going to follow up with another crossbow at the guy who's got the uh, uh, she eyes as well. Okay, go for it. Uh, twenty-one total. Uh, mm -hmm. so that's just going to be weapon dice. That's nine. Okay, uh, nine points of damage. All right, so as you yell out, as you step back from the creature, you yell out, yell out to Wilona to duck, and she attempts to put her shield up uh, unsuccessfully as this, you fire the first bolt, whispering uh, divine incantations under your breath. The bolt flies out of uh, the crossbow. In, in, a, in the midair, you see it twists as volny vines just begin to coat the bolt. And as it slams into the creature, they burst, throwing all of these uh, hail of um, spines out from the impact point, covering Wallona and all of these creatures uh, in this 
just sharp nicks of blood become spurting out everywhere all over these creatures uh and then as the creature reels back from that when you use that moment of opportunity to fire a second bolt that slams into the ribcage of this creature heavily wounding it but it stays standing and is just bearing down now one below now which brings us to tilly uh so if i bonus action to two weapon fight can i split those attacks between movement as usual yeah 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 okay so i will bonus action to two weapon fight I'm going to hit the one in front of me with my shot sword. You, when you two weapon fight, you have to make a melee attack with your main hand first. Okay, well, the, sh the shot sword is in my main hand. Okay. Well, your main hand's just whichever you choose. Yeah. Uh, that's not very good. That is an 11. That will unfortunately miss. Dang, well, I guess I'm going to hit this with the claw as well. Okay. Uh, that's a lot better. That's a 26. That does hit, yeah. I feel like that one probably hit, yeah. Um, that is a total of six slashing damage. Okay. So, as you swing at the creature with your short sword, it blocks it, it parries it to the side with these seemingly impossibly strong nails. Just You hear it clatter off, and you just feel for a moment there's just anger come over you for a split second as you drive this claw up into the inside of this creature and you just tear the internal organs of this creature apart as you rend the claw back out and this the in the innards of this creature spill out onto the floor in front of you that's real nasty and you gain yeah temporary hit points one one temporary hit point great you see now as the obsidian on the back of the uh, on the back of the gauntlet seems to glint ever so slightly by the way, I lost uh, flames here. Oh, okay. You, <laughs> you failed a DC 10 constitution. Okay. Um, so that creature is dead. Uh, and that I'm one... going to... Wait, I have movement. You do. Go for it. Uh, I'm going to move over here to back up my good friend. All right, and that will bring us to Namari's go. Oh, it will bring us to your good friend's go. <laughs> your good friend is going nice as you come up, and then look. I'm looking back at the two creatures and say, "Fine, fine, yeah, try this." And I'm going armor for Gathis. Okay. So you see now as the interlocking plates of uh, icy armor just begin to form around you. That strange almost elven-like armor feel they have to them as just and then just go come 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 at me all right <laughs> anything else you'd like to do with your turn no all right tristan i'll bring this to you uh we've gone up next i would like to cast fairy fire and if it's a 20 foot cube it's 20 foot each side right yeah so it's it's four squares across yeah cool so i'd like to do it there to there okay to try and get those three Go for it. Uh, so it'll be a dex save. Dex saving throw. Uh, so <laughs> the uh, Ashenide one and the front one both fail. The one at the back succeeds. Cool. Uh, that's another charm. So uh, you extend your hand out uh, uh, and just let forth this blast, this sort of cone of this uh, glittering energy that settles over this area, uh, catching onto two of these creatures, and you can see them now silhouetted. No matter how they try and hide their form, you can always see the uh, the outline of it. And with my movement, I'd like to just uh, just move up. Oh, oh, uh, yeah, just move up to this wall. And for now, that'll be my turn. Okay. When your turn brings us to gun, this creature has moved down the wall towards you now. It is in striking distance. Oh, excellent. I'm going to punch it with my sword. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. um uh, ba -ba, uh, why is that? Fuck. Uh, it is a 25 to hit. I forget I have plus 10 now, so I don't know why I keep looking at that number because it's really simple and there in front of me, but hey. Uh,. 15 slashing on the first. Second attack. 
is uh, 12. Okay. I rolled two twos. So, <laughs> so the... Uh, wait, the it's a 12 to hit on the second attack. Yes. Uh, the second attack will miss. How much damage was it on the first? 15. 15 points of damage. Okay. So... Uh, as you swing your blade in, actually, you don't even need to make the second attack because the first attack kills it. So as you swing your blade in, you just, as this creature comes down towards you, you see it's about to leap for you and you just bring the blade up and catch it in the jaw, uh, in between the upper and lower jaw and just straight through this creature uh, into the top vertebrae in the back of the neck and just slam it into the wall as it goes into its death throes. Damn. And... You just have your movement, and you still have one attack left. Oh shit, I do! Okay. Um... Okay, I'm just gonna... Is this guy above Namari up on the wall? Uh, it's a tall enough... It's a short enough wall that you could reach. Oh, cool, so, okay. Oh, oh, yeah, okay. Sort of Post at head height, looking at Namari. Splat! Okay, go for it. Um... Uh, 20, not natural. Uh, that will hit, yeah. Oh, two sixes. Um, so that's 12 plus uh, seven, 19 plus two, 21. 21. Okay. So in one strike, you hit this creature with your blade and just bifurcate it. And there's the two halves. Each of them falls down one side of the wall. It's The blood sprays across Namari, but freezing yeah. about an inch away from her... Uh, her form and just patters her little ice crystals. Thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> so that brings us to there you go. Is this one that lunges for you once again, Ronan? It's going to take a strike at you. That's going to miss. Number six. Uh, two of them are going to strike at you, Alona. Two of them. No, three of them. Yeah, I was going to say. Uh, so that is going to be a uh, 21 to hit. Mm -hmm. uh, then there's going to be a 19 to hit. That is my armor class. And the last one is a 11. So two will hit. One from one of the little guys and one from the big guy. The Asher Knight. So the little one is um, eight points of slashing damage and a constitution saving throw. Yep. Uh, that's a natural 19. Okay. And the second one is uh, 12 points of slashing damage and another constitution saving throw. Uh, that is 13. Okay. So you manage to fend off the poison as the tongue goes in. Uh, you just pull away from it and that's like a slapping sound as the tongue's pulled out. Ow. Uh, and then uh, one's going to strike at you, Namari. Uh, with a 19 to hit. Yes, and it takes 15 ice damage. Or cold damage. It takes 15? Mm. I thought it took the amount that it took off you. I don't know, it's been so long since I've seen No, uh, Amor for Gathers gives me 15 extra hit points and also does that same damage, I believe, when summoned. I'm going to check just to be sure. Well, you take 10 points of slashing damage, and I would like you to make a constitution saving throw for me. Uh, roll the 16. So. Okay, 18. you're good. All right, so uh, just give us a check up on how I'm ever guess if I guess this works. You gain five temporary hit points for the duration. If the creature hits you with a melee attack while you have these hit points, the creature takes five cold damage for every slot above, uh, for every Sweet. slot second or above, you gain an extra five per slot. So, so it just. If cast it at third level, it's 15. It does just take 15 points of damage. Very nice. As it goes to slash at you, you see its entire forearm just freezes up, and as it. As it hits you, it just the entire forearm shatters off this creature, but it just does not seem unperturbed, like perturbed by this at all. As it just continues to swipe at you, uh, like you know, that, swipe at the air in front of you with the other arm. That hurt, but it was worth it. 
Ow! Uh, and that will end that go, which brings us to Bologna. I'm going to use my action to disengage, because uh, fuck this shit, I'm out. Okay. And then I'm going to move my happy butt over here where there are people, because no thank you. Uh, there's uh, a wall in the way there. Ah, shit. Well, all right. So then we will just go... Nope. Shit. We'll go this way. There. Okay. Um... And yeah, so that is, that's my go. All right. Now when your go brings us to running. Uh, seeing Waluna get out of there, mm -hmm. uh, I will cast Hail of Thorns and attempt to hit all three of them again. Okay. You will be at disadvantage currently. Uh, yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, I'll risk it. I'll get backwards. I'll take, okay. I'll take the attack. Uh, ooh, that one's gonna hit. Unfortunately, that's a that's fine. Twenty. So uh, that is uh, six points of slashing damage and a Constitution saving throw from me. Yeah, it was an eighteen on the dice. Oh uh, yeah, plus you're three. Fine. Yeah, six okay. points. You said six points. Yeah, six points of slashing damage. Okay, so it's gonna be uh, my last bolt before I have to reload. Uh, so I'm gonna fire once at the. Uh, guy here, the big guy, the uh -huh. actually 15 on the die plus 10. Yeah, 25 uh, hit. Uh, so it and Colossus Slayer and Hail of Thorns. Yeah, so deck saving throws all around. Uh, that's three fails. Uh, so that's going to be for the big guy on the weapon damage alone, that's going to be. 17 points of damage yeah and then the hail of thorns damage is going to be a five on everybody nice very nice okay so uh, as this first bolt flies into the target you once again catch it in its chest as these ones are the ash and i want to stood up taller so you can actually catch them in the chest and the arrow sinks into the creature the funny vines uh once again surrounding it the creature begins to fall to the floor and as it hits the floor out of its back bursts the this hail of thorns which scatters into the other two creatures just tearing them apart uh they're still alive but you can see they're just covered in these in hundreds of these small slices at this point uh then i'll take one step down here so they can see me and i'll yell at them and say come on all right so that will end your turn um, yep all right that will bring us to tilly uh, okay, I'm gonna step away from that. I'm gonna move over to this one. This is just yeah. like constantly up in Ronin's grill. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna get rid of that fan. Okay. Uh, I'm going to use the claw again. Uh, yeah. That's a 27 to hit. Yeah, that hits. <laughs> I, think I, I think I might have done that one. Yeah. Uh, no sneak attack, right? Uh, no sneak attack on this one. Uh, that is a 9 slashing damage. Okay. Uh, and then I will. Bonus to two weapon fight and follow up with the short sword as well. Okay. Uh, that is a 20, not natural. Uh, that will hit, yes. And that is four more piercing damage. How's it doing? Did I get it? Uh, it you tear at the creature, but uh, with a horrible, inflicting horrible wounds into it, but it stays standing. Oh well. It is definitely bleeding at this point, though, and part of its where its spleen used to be is missing. Cool. And that will end your go? Yes. All right, which brings us to Damari. You still have one of these creatures in melee with you. Yes, and I will cast Shocking. Don't worry about it. It's harmless. Ooh. Hold on, sorry, my computer just did a thing. Hmm. Um... Yeah. is gone. Sorry, my, my, I think my graphics card just decided to commit spooker. There we are. Um, I'm going to cast shopping, Shocking Grasp at the creature in front of me. Okay, that's a melee spell spell attack, melee right? Spell. Yeah. Do I get a uh, is that is that fairy fire or what's on him? It's fairy, uh, yeah, fire. Fairy fire. You so see I... advantage, yes. Nice. Thank you. That's a 25. That does hit, yes. Oh, that's 
D8, I believe. Uh, 2D8 at this point. 2D8, yes. Because you're level 5. 3 and 5, 8 damage. 8 damage to the creature. And I will then also hide behind the wall. Okay. Circle so you... gun thing. You can, you can, you, you got this, right? Cool. Cool, as cool. This, and... As this creature begins to swipe at you with the other arm, um, the, obviously it, its first arm completely destroyed, you reach out and you grab it by the wrist and just blast it with electrical energy down there and it recoils from you for a moment. You take that opportunity to skirt away. Which brings us to Tristan. I would like to move up to there. And uh, can I see the one that's sort of right parallel to me? I know there's a wall there, but how tall is the wall? Uh, that wall is two stories high. Oh, so I won't be able to see it from there. You won't be able to see the two on the other side, no. Right, okay. Well, in that case, I would have moved to there then. Okay. Um, and taken a shot at it with my crossbow. Okay. The one that's fairy fired. Yes, go for it. Uh, I will take that. Uh, 19 to hit. That does hit, yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, so D8. So D8, right, for a light crossbow? Yes. Yep. Light crossbow is D8. Yep. And a, a heavy is a D10. Yes. That's what it is. Uh, so that's going to be seven points of piercing damage. Seven points. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the bolt sinks into the creature, and you can see at this point, from the constant barrages of fallens all across this creature, and now your crossbow bolt, this creature is heavily wounded. And with my bonus, I would like to inspire Tilly, and in Halfling, I'd just like to shout out, which, like, it's odd, because it would be sounding quite aggressive, but I've never really heard an aggressive Halfling, um, other than Tilly. And it'd just be like, you can do it! Like that one guy from Epi Adam Sandler. All I know right. I can. <laughs> and that will bring us to Gun. Alright, um, well, gonna step up to this guy. Is he on the okay. wall? High up? He's on the low enough part of the wall because he's been striking at, uh, at Namari. Well, he's going to get my sword in his face. Uh, with a... Oh, that's cocked. Hang on. Uh, <laughs> 29 to hit. <laughs> yeah, you hit. Yeah. Uh, uh, so that's... 15 slashing. 15 points of slashing damage. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, as you see, the Mario reaches out and shocks this creature and runs behind you as she does, yelling that you can deal with that one. <laughs> Step forward as this creature is just rearing up uh, in pain from the shock. And as it comes back down again, you use its own momentum against it to just drive your blade through its head. And as it does it, from it lets go of the wall as it does and you, it just hangs on the edge of your blade for a moment before it get, you're like, oh, that's heavy, and drop it off. Excuse me, with the strength of 23, there's little the gun finds heavy. Oof. Um, but with the rest of my movement and my one remaining attack, I'm going to run up here and hit this one. Okay. Uh, oh, who's the kill, Steve? Hey. Don't fucking even. That's a 24 to hit. That does hit, yes. Uh, 18 slashing damage. Okay, so as you run up to this one, uh, you see it bearing down on Telly, you just come up and just carve straight into this creature with a huge gash into the side, and it barely has a moment to realize what's coming before it is, life is gone from it. Nice. And that will bring us to Vego. Uh, these two are going to charge down towards here. Uh, the remaining two, and they're both going to strike at you, Tristan. Okay. Uh, one will miss with a seven, and the other one, though, is a 19. Yeah, that'll hit. Okay. Uh, so I will cut in, no, uh, I can't call cutting words if I know it hits, do it? Yeah, you, you can call it after you've been told the. Um... All right, yeah, because I can call it on damage as well, can't I? Yeah. Guess, uh, yeah, I'll cut in words. But... All right. Also, your camera's full. Yeah. Have I? God damn it. Uh, I'll sort it out uh, after I've done this bit. 
Yeah. I've got in words. Uh, that's seven less, so it won't hit. No, that brings it to a 12. Yeah, so that won't hit. All right, so uh, what, what do you say? Um, just dwarven obscenities. <laughs> So as the creature comes into you, you hope that its last vestiges of uh, of thought still remembered some dwarven swear words, and as you just yell at it with the, with arcane infused uh, language, it just stops and recoils for a moment. At the just sheer horribleness of your words. I like to imagine you got them from gun. Probably. And that will end your go, which means it's two. Gun. Wait. No, what? Me. Because that was nope. in their go. Yeah. Well, oh no. Alright, so, now that I've <laughs> lost their attention, I'm going to move down here, right here, and then I'm going to aim Burning Hands this way. Okay. So it won't hit my teammates. Go for it. Uh, so that, is that is a dexterity save. Uh, that is the fairy fired one <laughs> gets a 20 not natural and then a 10 on the non verified one cool one of them fails then okay and that is 3d6 uh so that is nine points of fire damage okay uh half of that to the to the one half... saved yeah yeah okay um and that'll be my turn all right. So, as you reach out with the the telltale magic casting of uh, burning hands with the thumbs put together, you blast forward, um, and as fire leaps from your fingertips into the enemies, it scorches across all of them. And you can see now they're just barely standing at this point. Their forms are wavering. You can see that if they were alive, uh, you know, truly alive at this point, that they would be running. But all they have right now is the hunger. And that will end your go, which brings us to running. Uh, I will... I'll take out the uh, blade and attempt to just cut through them. Okay. Uh, oh, I don't have a big bonus to the blade, so I don't know what that's going to hit. Uh, 11 on the die plus... That hits. Oh, plus 7. Yeah, never mind. And that's a D... Six mm -hmm. and uh, D eight. Assuming that guy's been hit before, yeah. Yes. Oh, he's been just damaged by burn hands and two hail of thorns. Oh yeah, that's right. Uh, that was me. That. This has uh, been the death by a thousand cuts on these two. Uh, that's a ten damage. Yeah. Um, as you swing the blade down into this one with that, the gracefulness that only this weapon provides, and just you just carve one arm off this creature, and it reaches over and just and horrible pain just succumbs to its wounds. And is uh, oh, I see. okay, yeah. And then I'll take a movement to here and I'll attack this one as well. Yeah, and you get the plus two on this one because you're flanking it. Yes, and I need it. Uh, six plus two is eight, plus seven is 15. Hits. And uh, no class of Slayer in this one, just the dice, three, seven damage. Seven damage. So this one, you just run up behind this one using the curve of the uh, of this of this blade. You drive it up this creature's back and just sever the upper vertebrae. Uh, and it's just, the creature just falls flat. And just very unsettlingly ragdoll white, just poof, falls flat. And... As the last one falls, you see the others, but we're all watching you from the uh, from the distance at this point. Begin to scamper and scutter and scuttle away, leaving you alone. Well, hey, that wasn't so bad. Ow! <laughs> Not as quietly as perhaps she should have. Gun just says, "Cowards." Um, no, that's fine. I'm perfectly fine with them being cowards. Co I mean, yeah, same actually. That's, uh, the, um, the shadow thingy. 
Did you get hurt? A little. I'll be fine. Rub some down it, you'll be fine. Yeah, I can patch it up if you want. Uh, yeah, if you don't mind, yeah. I, mean, I lost a third. Okay. Uh, well, I'll just give a healer's kit because I'm not super great, so... You can say what hit points you are on, by the way, guys. Can I? Yeah. I'm yeah. 22 out of 34, so I'm... Uh, dying, you but... get uh, nine from my uh, healer's kit. Ooh, Thirty out of shit. fifty-one, and I'm afraid to use any more spells. Uh, okay, hang on. I will cast a first level cure wounds on uh, Namari and a second level on. Wait, wait, wait! I have. I still have no, that I'm... healing potion. I'm fine after the healer's kit. Are you sure? I, I'm. Yeah. I don't really need magic a, a lot. As I say, I I'm have good. two spells left. No, no, I'm only three hit points away from Max. And I okay, okay, fine. For an uh, hour, then I I'll just do, I'll do a first level cure wounds then. Yeah, on... don't use your magic. Save your spell slots. Have the healing potion, honestly. Sure. If you're willing to yeah. hand it over. Okay. It's not the beer one, is it? Yes. It is? Oh, it's t two D four plus two. Thank you. It tastes like a bitter. Oh, pint of John Smith's. I rolled two fours on that. See. So ten points. Mm -hmm. Dwarfish healing potions. What did I tell you? What did I tell you? <laughs> just gonna look at. Uh, I'm gonna be like, this is the shit. Oh. She just gives you that. Mm-hmm. It's a proper dark ale as well. Proper heavy. Mm. You don't yes. need food. You could say it's, you could say it's a <laughs> yeah, dark yeah. stout. Mm. Chances are. It's not It's not brewed with hops. It, it's oh. just brewed with rock. <laughs> uh, thanks for the thanks for the assist though, Tilly. I can get that guy to shake and shake him at all. Hey, no problem. Uh, you got to... Think... Go ahead. I was gonna say, I do have to point out, it seems weird that some of them have like the whole smoky business going on, and some of them mm -hmm. don't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not even sure what it does. Like the first guy that had the smoky eyes, I just had him two bolts and he just he went. I've noticed hung around. that the smoke ones have like this weird fucked up shit they do with their tongues, and, and if they get. If they get you with them, then uh, it, uh, it fucking God. sucks. Bad. Didn't the smaller one have that as well? That hit me. Uh, it didn't try and stick. All oh, right, it was. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> Say fine. It. Do it. Say, Say it. it. Say it. Did not try and stick its tongue in you. Well, I'm offended that it wouldn't. Uh, are they still smoky when they're dead? Still. Uh, the ashen eyed ones are. Yes. Okay. Can and I have like a poke around at one? Yeah. Same. Yeah. Sure. I'm making an investigation. Do any more of them have ancestor coins or anything? No, these ones all seemingly. If I'm helping Tilly, does that give her advantage? I just make a separate roll. Oh, okay. Uh, that was a 15 from me. Mm. Okay. <laughs> That's an 18 from me. Dang. All right. So between the two of you, um, excuse me, the uh, ones with the ashen eyes um, and the ashen claws, uh, it's it's not ash. Um, this is the first thing you learn because it's not coming from anywhere. There's no fire. It's just sort of... It, has the same uh, look as ash uh, as it flickers off, but it's completely black, uh, and it completely blackens over their eyes as well. Um, and these ones, the uh, uh, the ones with the ashen eyes, uh, when they're cut, they don't bleed. It's, okay. it's uh, in, inside it is dust. Right. Okay, that's nasty. I don't think Tilly's smart enough to put anything together from that, really. Yeah, I don't think I am either. I've got intelligence of 10. Uh, can I just try and uh, recollect some bolts? Yeah, sure. You, you... Do the ones that I hail of thorns, do they get, like, destroyed when I fire them, or...? I mean, I'm not keeping track of bolts, so you take some bolts back. Sure. 
to like um, I will describe the weird Ashen stuff to the yeah. others. You might be able to click something together with that. Do the non-Ashen ones bleed when you stick them? Mm -hmm. I wonder if the ones with the Ashen shit were just bled dry. Mm. I mean, that's an easy test. I can figure that out. Uh, I'll take the blade and I'll just cut just into an arm. Of, I just want, to, just want to try and see the inside. Of the Ashen one or the... Um, the Ashen one, one yeah. You you cut and instead of where the blood would be in the in the uh, just dust comes out. Hmm. Maybe those ones were closer to whatever happened. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Or yeah, they're pretty much. That's what I'm thinking. Uh, but is it like a dominance sort of thing? Like the only the eyes only started. Flickering with the ash when they saw you. Hmm. Were they ones in tune with other things? It makes sense if there's fewer of them. Maybe. Was there anything like left on them, like in terms of like vestiges of clothes or anything left? Nothing. They, right. uh, no, uh, no coins this time. No, they're butt nude. Uh, Even I... then, the coins aren't that much of an indicator. I have ancestor coins. Hmm. Can I put together? Uh, because when we were walking along to the Temple of Martin, mm -hmm. uh, I've been specifically watching the creatures on the roofs and stuff. Yes. Did and any of them appear to oh, be ashen? None of them had the ashen eyes. No. So then it seems they're they're only aggressive if there is one of these with them otherwise they seem content to hold back mm -hmm. they they watched us walk the whole way and now that then again when we got attacked at the start the, when we came in here there was ashenite ones as well i'm pretty sure yeah yeah, yeah there's so, one maybe it's like whatever process has messed these ones up makes them more aggressive or makes them like leaders yeah i think could be yeah like alpha like kind of like alpha dogs i guess or something if you want to i wonder go. yeah um, i wonder if we if we just straight up kill those immediately will the others flee or is it like a fight to the death then? Well, I mean, the two Ashenite, or however many we had, the Ashenite ones were down, but those last two were still. Kind of yeah, but this. there was like, there was walls in the way and stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. One of them got killed like way up here by gun. They didn't see because the, the walls were in the way. All right, I have an idea. I go up to the corpse of one of the ashen ones and I just whack its head off. Yeah. And I, mean, I just chop the head off one of them anyway, so. Yeah, I'll just collect the head and tie it to my belt. Uh, it's got my hair, unfortunately. I have rope. Okay, you just rope tie it to your belt. Mm -hmm. Like Witcher Hook style it. Mm hmm. Next time we see some, I'll show them this. Yeah. Hope for the best. Pretty much what I was kind of getting to, but I didn't want to be so just walk up and cut their heads off, but okay. I mean, I don't think hanging... do it. Yeah, I don't think hanging heads are much your style, Ronan. I mean, yeah. What are you going to do with that one, then? That was dominance? Yeah. I think it's dead. Oh, oh, it around and the help. other ones. Still, if another group appears, I can present it to them and let them know that this will happen to them if you, they fuck with us. And if they don't heed the warning, then... You'll have a nice new piece for the mantle. To hang over the mantle, yeah. I don't know, I feel like that might stink very quickly. It, it's dry. I mean, we walked around the swamp with that one and then the point of Tristan, so smell is just not a thing to me anymore. I think my noses were permanently, like, my nose was damaged in the swamp. Like, this just, this doesn't work anymore. Oh, dear. 
Are you pointing at Ronan or Tristan? I meant Ronan, not Tristan. I'm gonna say, like, I was just like, offended. I know. <laughs> you <laughs> smell great. That, that whole time, you It's his like, perfume. Just, just... It's not perfume, it's natural musk, I'll have you know. Mm. Yeah, it's it's not perfume, just like it's not eyeliner. Correct. Mm. Mm. Yes, yeah, that natural musk of jasmine and lilies. and Yeah, okay. So... Are you just going to continue on? Yeah. All right. There's more of them though here. Maybe we're getting closer to something. Mm. Yeah. I say, so, time to reload the crossbow. Yeah. Pull the box off. Put some more bolts in. Put it back on. Okay. As you continue making your way through, you don't see any of the creatures at all. There's a single one crosses your path. And eventually, out of the darkness, brought into the light, you see a huge building. Large uh, octagonal crenellations uh, sit at the top of this gable-roofed building. Uh, a huge uh, mural across the front of it shows off the prosperity of the dwarves. It, it shows bags and bags of gold and, uh, and jewels just surrounding uh, a group of dwarves that are engaged in some form of debate one holds a gavel in their hand and across the in like a very greshian style uh is uh carved into it is the uh it just says caravaz hawk or gavel uh, gavel hall and you see there's a very tall set of uh, stone doors here at the front across a small like uh there's like a small like drawbridge uh which is set into what looks to be a now empty moat. Uh, did you say the drawbridge was up or down? It's down. Okay, good. Can I try and look into the moat? Yeah, it's. See if there's anything down there? It's some deteriorates from like this leftover from the evaporation of the water, but you can't seem to see anything now. No dead bodies, nothing like that. Um, whether the water would have all evaporated? Hmm. Well, this place seems ancient. And if it's been this way for a long time, maybe. I mean, water doesn't just dis disappear. True. Um, I mean, not that I know of. Unless it's like really, really hot. Just kind of go stagnant otherwise. Mm. Then again, nothing here is normal, so. Nah, probably nothing to worry about. I hope she's yeah. fine. You just have to say that. So, what are you going to do? Shall we move in? Yeah, match our sweet asses inside. All right. So, as you make your way up to the door, you push the stone doors open once again and are met by an internal corridor that leads off. As you walk inside, it's not long before you open up into the large central room which makes up the vast majority of uh, this gold hall. Uh, and you see it is what was once just meant to be filled with all of the different goods of the dwarves is just empty. In the center, there is uh, what was once uh, a fountain. The top has been broken off, and so now it just resembles a water trough, completely empty, and four figures reefed in shimmering darkness that billows off them like smoke stare down into the water here. V vague remnants of uh, noble-esque clothing uh, sit on their forms, and you can see the gavel hammers at their sides. Above you, on uh, tall uh, walkways, which make their way uh, along both sides um, of this tall of this room, you can see uh, on each side three figures clad in full armor with uh, faces that uh, with metal faces that look like dwarves uh, that look like dwarven you know visages, holding large crossbows up in a regimented stance. Watch you as you come in. 
I'm going to take a break then. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. And so we're going to get a drink, guys. We'll be back here in five to ten minutes. Uh, thank you very much for watching. And we will see you shortly. Ah, yeah, I'm going to go grab a drink.
Welcome back, everybody. Thanks for bearing with us for that short break. So, as you stand here now in the Gold Hall, which is in the Gavel Hall. Great naming there, buddy. You see these, uh, you're flanked by these figures above you on these walkways, uh, holding crossbows. And in front of you are these four uh, shimmering beings of shadow, dwarfs of, made from shadow, which are stood around this empty, now trough, once fountain. Um, when you say they're watching us, do you mean in the active sense or the passive sense of they've just been built to look like they're watching people below? Uh, as you stepped into the room, they follow you. Uh, okay. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to go ahead and nudge whoever's next to me and be like, this looks like the place. Yeah, there's, there's a physicality to them. It's not like a, you know, like a rigid construct motion. It's a, it's a human motion. It's a, yeah, it's, it's definitely a motion of following, not the slow, you know, turning of a. Uh, yeah, but I'm past assigning human traits to anything we bump into down here. <laughs> what do you want to bet they're gonna uh, be protecting that piece of heart? Ah, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd bet on that. I feel like we'd all bet the same way, though, so it'd be a useless. Bet. Yeah, it's not. Yeah. I'll bet against Did... it. I was tempted. <laughs> you, Just thinking about it then, I was very tempted. The payback would be... I, I have no money, so, like, you know, there'd be no payback. <laughs> so who wants to go near the fountain? I don't think it's a matter of want. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we could stand here. No, nope, let's just, let's go. I wouldn't draw weapons, though, just in case. Right now. Have them ready, but don't draw them. I'll keep um, my mouth shut, then. The door said that this gauntlet was, like, their greatest relic, so I'm just gonna hold it up as we walk over. It's like, yo! <laughs> like, at the end of the breakfast club, just... <laughs> oh, see, I was thinking more along the lines of... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> also, again, it's hard to put yourself away, but, you know. You're a weapon in yourself, because you know. Then Are you calling yourself. me a fucking weapon right now? Is <laughs> no, that what I'm you're? Calling, I'm calling um, you a beast. That's an insult. Up upgraded from uh, gun to tank. Yeah. Calling someone an axe is a big insult. <laughs> so, as you step forward, uh, the heads of the uh, the four creatures look up towards you and you see now these almost like burning coals but of this deep purplish darkness just stare back at you. And just They say nothing. I'll step forward and in Dwarvish um, say in a very commanding tone name yourselves. Pay the price. What is the price? Translating for those who don't speak English. What would you give? I mean, it has to be someone else this time. <laughs> I was going to say, Meta, get rid of that cursed claw. <laughs> you didn't know. That's why I said Meta. What would we gain from paying that price? I mean, what, what is this? Translating. Gun, because I don't know language. So I'm translating for Namari. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nothing? Not saying anything back. Is there anywhere that's sort of obviously set out to uh, submit payment of any kind? You know. An address to write a check to. Oh, I get the feeling they're not after coin. No. What? Just like a post box in the middle. Can we see what's in the fountain from here? Mm -hmm. Nothing, it's bone dry. You Thanks said they were staring into like a trough that had water in it, right? You were, they were staring into the fountain, which now is bait is so the the bit of the fountain that comes up has broken 
Oh, and right. There's no way yeah. to, to see the, the where, where it would have fixed. So it's now just a trough that is empty. And that's what they were staring at. It. Thought. I feel like there's a connotation here that I don't like. Mm. Having seen no response from you for a while, they just go back down to staring into the trough. I have an idea, but I don't like it. Yeah, What's I the idea? idea and I don't like it either. I think your idea is the same as mine. Blood? Blood. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was yeah. thinking blood too. Yeah. That was the connotation it's, I didn't like. Yeah. yeah, it's like, why all the time it's just, like, all the stories are just blood? <laughs> yeah, I all mean, of us are just there going, I don't... <laughs> yeah, we're like, oh, I no. just... Mm. I mean, I'll I'll do it, I don't care. I'll fucking do it. There's no I problem mean, with me, but, like... I'm willing to do it, too, but not a whole lot of it. Eh, ah, fair enough, I don't mind. But like, I don't want to look like an idiot and do it, and then they're like, "You just ruined their fountain." <laughs> yeah. we'll, do it we'll do it together so that we can share the blame. How's how's that sound? Now ask them. I mean, they ask us what we would be paying. All right, hey. ask them in dwarvish. How about blood? I look back up. We do not need. Well, that's a relief. Yeah. Thank. Yeah. It's a good thing we didn't make idiots of ourselves, Ronan. It's a good thing I just thought instead of acting. Like, mm. I'm learning. <laughs> <laughs> Character learning. Yeah. Mark experience. What could we offer? From this distance, can we see anything in the draft? I assume at this point, well, you had to have it for them to... Hmm. Uh, say anything to you. You've walked up to the other side of the trough to where they're standing. Mm. Right, yeah. It's empty. We're all just kind of gathered around it, like, what, what, what is this? She's not like, eh, going through his bags, like... I don't know, why don't we just barter them? I'll give you eight gold. How about that? We do not need. I'm gonna do a thing, you guys, and I apologize if it starts shit, but I'm thinking I'm gonna cast light in the middle of it, if you're okay with that. Okay. Like a little light cantrip. So yeah, there's yeah. no... Yeah, light. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> the fountain is bone dry. The moat is bone dry. What if it's water? Mm. What if I need water? I mean, that I just thinking. thought about it. Literally just that, like... <laughs> I can make water tomorrow. I can empty my canteen now. I'd gladly pay you for water today. <laughs> Mine's got beer in it. You know that well, might I'd have known, I could have had gallons of it. Yeah, same. Uh, I'll say in Dwarvish, what about water? A good price. <laughs> Tomorrow. Uh, if I take out my uh, pouch of the, with the water, there's the, the I'd be like, is this enough? This is all I have. No response. Where do you want the water? Their eyes flick down. Hey, I'll just pour the water in the fountain. Okay. Like empty out my entire thing. Then you see now from left to right, the first one uh, just pipes up and goes, I drink Hammerborn. The second one, go full. Brimhaven. The third one. Gollin. And the fourth one. Silence. Pour my water as well. What do you want for this price? I'll pull out my piece of the Thane's heart. The other part. You see, one of them reaches in, pulls it out. Does he hand it over or is he just holding it? Just holding it. 
a better price. Um, I could just pour some more water in, I guess. I guess I do so. A good price. Just holds out. Cut hands. I try and take it. Take it. You. No, just look back down at the water. I just kind of stand with my hands on my hips and like we're really overthinking these things. We really are, but I feel like if we don't, the one time we don't, we will die. Us in the ass. Yeah. The last time we didn't overthink anything, we let. Namari go ahead on her own and get infected and then try to eat people. While... Whoa, wait, what? Will I ever live this down? No. Well, no, I mean... because uh, Tilly got a sick new claw hand and the first thing you thought about was taking out someone's heart, so no. No. I mean, technically, technically that happened because I lost a rock, paper, scissors, so that's on me. That's true. That explains a lot. Anyway, I'm gonna... <laughs> I'm gonna step back and kind of respectfully bow to them a little and just so I'll make my way out. Good business. Nice so service. Nice. Five star review. <laughs> you can put that on a blurb. I'm gonna say, are we gonna go on Yelp? <laughs> I was getting super Resident Evil 5. What are you buying yeah, vibes same. from this guy? Same. <laughs> a fine price. Hmm. Well, we have all three pieces now. I guess we take them back. Yeah. Yeah. Do we put them together? Do they sort of? <laughs> uh, they fit. You see valves and such. You know the general shape of a heart, and as it okay. fits together, you hear this horrible, just sickening. <laughs> as yeah, you see yeah, the yeah. the flesh stitch back together again and mends. Awful lot of sickening noises down here. Mm, mm. Mm. Horrible sucking sounds. Yeah, and with it being such a tight, confined space, the acoustics really enhance the gross frequencies. Yeah, let's get out of here, please. Yeah. Yeah. Let's make our way back to the thing. Just be on your guard. Always on. Yeah, actually, if something did the thing say something took his heart and split it. Mm. So is that I think I remember that correctly. I, I don't know. Uh, I, I was really creeped out back then. Implying you're not now. I think uh, I'm more or less settling with what this is. I mean, it was probably all the darkness stuff, right? Hmm. Yeah, but if something actually, like, if it was just those things, then, like, those are the remnants of dwarves. Was it, like, something that came in, took the heart, took all the dwarves? Because taking a heart and splitting it, that sounds more than what those things can do. Mm -hmm. Like, um, that sounds like if we're walking back with the whole heart, whatever did, it's going to be like... I mean, why did these dwarves have the heart? Did they perhaps take it from the thing? Was he the problem? If they took it from the thing, I don't think they would have given it back just for some water. Hmm. Also, I feel like whatever this is has something to do with those creepy lantern things, and the thing did have the biggest one. So, maybe something happened there. I, I don't know. I'm just trying to piece things together and feel like that fits, but I yeah. don't know. There's a lot there's we don't a, know. There's a quick way to get to the bottom of this, and... That's taking his heart back to him. Yeah. So you're just making your way back there? Straight mm -hmm. away? Okay. So you uh, can... I have cast Pass Without a Trace on us so that we can, if need be, try and move stealthily. Okay. Good idea. All right. So are you all moving stealthily? Sure. Uh, I guess, yeah, if we're told to. Okay. Oh! <laughs> yeah, plus 10 to your roll, obviously. Uh, 
plus 10, you said? Yeah. Okay, that would put me at 28. Same! 20, 27. That'll put me at 34. Jesus. 32, but with a natural 20. Okay. 17! <laughs> for heavy armor. <laughs> Biggest liability in the tradition. So, as you stealthily make your way back, avoiding as many of these gaunt figures as possible, uh, you finish traversing the gavel hall, and then you find yourself back in the corridors. And the darkness is getting closer and closer and closer in now, as if it's watching you. But you do arrive back at the rotunda. And you see in front of you now the Fane, the remnants of the Fane. So do we just do we push it in? Uh, do we see anything else around before we approach? Um, not any different from what you saw last time. Okay, just making sure that like nothing's going to jump out and wreck us if we try to approach the Fane with his heart. Uh, I just had a bad thought again. I don't want to backtrack on our plan at all or throw a wrench in the works, but what if, right, and bear with me, the thing was the problem and mm -hmm. whatever was solving the problem was like, can't kill him, take the heart and chain him up instead, separate it out to like important places so people won't go there or, you know, something like that. And in like a last ditch effort, and like we're just going to undo that. Just putting it out there. That's what I said. I mean, if they were solving the problem, they didn't really do a a real good job. Mm. And I think place kind of sucks. That yeah, but I also think I mean, that thought did cross my mind. But if that was the case, I, I feel like the the tinker would have hidden it better as opposed to just held it out. Like if it was a case of no one getting to these pieces. I feel like, you know, a trap or something yeah. guarding it might have... Yeah, I suppose. Realistically, just... none of them were particularly difficult to mm. get. We just kind of stumbled on them. Yeah. Unless the people that held the pieces were the ones that wanted him to be released, or like the people that split up the pieces. No, man, it's getting convoluted. And getting... Yeah, it's no. Just just... The overthinking part again. I'm just, I'm, worried. I'm just worried. I'm just worried. I'm just worried. And if at the end of the day, he is the problem, if we restore his heart and he unleashes holy hell, then it's our duty to bring him to justice. Yeah, I'm up for a scrap. Yeah, we give him his heart, he's bad, take his head. Exactly, Tristan. For I've once you're talking sense. You. I've been spending too much time with you, that's why. Good to see I'm a good influence. <laughs> so who wants to do the honors? I'll do it. If he's if, if I put his hat in and he immediately attacks whoever's plunged into his hat's best off me because I can yep. take a hit. Yeah. Alright. So you put the hat in and you can feel the viscous whatever it is remaining of this vein just around your fingers as you stick the heart in and as you do it begins beating in the chest once more and the vein just before the heart stops. And the fainter's head lolls to the side. And the eyes roll back in the head. And the chains and just begin swinging freely as the fainter's body flops to the ground. And as if thousands of years at once take hold of the fainter's body, it just crumbles. Are you sure you put it in the right way? I think we were overthinking again. Yeah. Um, was there anything left behind, like his um, diadem or anything? No, oh, bummer. But he was he blocking a path, right? He was blocking a set of doors. Well. 
Let's see what's behind this door. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I'm assuming uh, things are less, not any less spoopy. I put my money on either everything being solved and being fine now, or there being like something real bad behind those doors. The atmosphere had does not seem any different after Thane gone. Nothing. No difference at all. Maybe oh, now's the time to place a bet. Are we all ready? As well as would be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bus. I'm gonna like bust through the doors if I can, unless like super big heavy doors. The big heavy doors. Uh, maybe a good, probably uh, about eighty feet tall stone doors. Oh, okay. These are huge stone doors. I'll help push me open. Oh no no no! I'm doing Aragorn in two towers. Like. <laughs> yes, you are. Yeah. The doors open. You step beyond the faint gate. And here, the darkness sits like ooze. It's thick, heavy, it clings to existence. And now, in front of you, you see a tall stone hall. The walls engraved with images of the founding years of the hold. Stout-handed dwarves stand against orc and ogre as they claim the mountain. And in here, you see statues. They lie in the back wall. Six in total, with a couple of plinths and stand empty. The statues look like. Pardon? What do the statues look like? Uh, look like dwarf, very finely dressed dwarves. But it's a fair distance away from you right now, because you're just in the entrance away of the room, so you can't really see much in the darkness, even with your dark vision. Well, I guess we're just heading in. Yep. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. So as you step inside, the doors behind you. Oh, Joyce, good sign. Mm -hmm. ah, I expected as much. Yeah, same. Yeah. Let's keep moving. I like to keep my eyes out while we're moving ahead as well. Just okay. can I any sort of movement. Are you guys okay with me casting light on one of us just so that... I mean, you, they've got the drift cloak casting light constantly. Oh, right. Okay. I wasn't sure oh, if that was still on or not. Yeah. Yeah. It stays on unless I turn it off. Oh, yeah. baller. Never mind then. Well, it is literally a ball. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I guess we're just sliding forwards. Yes. Okay. Not stopping to look at the statues or anything? I want to look oh, I thought the statues like at the other end of the room from what you yeah, did. So you, so oh, so you're treading... Yeah, to, to yeah. get to, yeah. Yeah. So you make your way to the other end of the room. As you get closer, you realize these statues, they're all in very heroic poses. Um, and the similarities between every statue. They're all wielding the same axe. They all have the same diadem on their heads. And they're all incredibly finely dressed. Am I to assume that these are all past thanes? Yes, and now that you're up closer here and you realize that these are thanes, you recognize this as a hall of the ancestors. Each statue represents a past thane. For reference, in your home, there are currently 47 statues. Holy shit. Okay. There's only six here. Yes. Either a very young base or someone reigned for a very long time. Mm hmm. The average um, wolf li lifespan is about 200 years. Yeah, I'm gonna guess the ladder. Yeah, the, the nasty rumors about this place had only been circulating for like, what was that, a century? Mm. As long as the settlement had been there. Uh, which was about a century. Mm -hmm. uh, either way, I, I wouldn't have stopped to look at the statues, so I'm still going. <laughs> okay. So, beyond the statues, 
as you get closer now when you finish looking at the statues the darkness sets out over a long canyon that despite how dark it is you can still see the opposite side but it pulls the the uh, doorway backwards away from your vision uh, the opposite end of the canyon just feels like it gets further and further away from your vision for a moment as your brain just churns at the the sheer prospect of what this is in front of you now it sets over a uh, a large canyon of which you can't see the bottom and the other end is of course a doorway um, so it's just like is there a, no way across? it's a long bridge oh, okay. across the entire thing uh, I turn around and like yell down to the others I hope no one's afraid of heights tough shit if we are Heights? No, falling. It's oh, a different math. Falling isn't the problem, it's the arriving. Well, yeah. That's hopefully, true. Hopefully we do like minimal falling. Mm, that would be preferable. Uh, and I'll start leading the way across the bridge, I guess. Okay. You're going across? Mm. Yes, I'm the lightest. I want to go first. <laughs> <laughs> it's a heavy stone bridge. It's like one continuous long line of stone that goes across. You never be too careful. And you can see the like stalactites over the underneath it um, has no like light supports it's just this long stone bridge and as you continue to make your way across it there comes a point where you can hear this low rumbling sound this brewing uh, just seems like seemingly almost like a roar just just appears underneath you and you can feel it begin to reverberate as this great gout of shadow erupts from the cavern under underneath you, slamming into the bridge behind you. This great beast of shadow twists its way out of the black onto the bridge. A huge hound-like beast of snarling teeth and endless dark. It slams onto the bridge behind you, claws crumbling at the edges taking up the entire space of this bridge, easily several times larger than the hound you encountered before, and as it snarls out this mighty roar, it shakes you to your core. And that's behind me. And that's behind all of you. Ah, hmm. oh, okay. Uh, time to run, guys. Ah, uh, we can take it. It takes up the entire... Not on a bridge. bridge. Not Five seconds. <laughs> What are you doing? Uh, sprint, sprinting. I'm sprinting. Yeah, running then, I guess, mind. cowards. <laughs> right. As you all charge across the bridge, the beast uh, bounds along behind you. I'd like everyone to make an athletics check for me, please. Oh boy. I'm better at these than I used to be. <laughs> Natural 20. 16. 15. 17. One. The dice, kind. the dice were not kind. Okay. Not a, not a natural one. It was a three. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So, what did you get? Gun. Fifteen. Okay. And then, uh, Werner. You muted. muted. Natural one. Okay. <laughs> Two. So. As you sprint forward, this beast bounding behind you, every single step uh, it takes just takes chunks out of this bridge, and you can feel it shake underneath you. The sides of it crumble quickly underneath it, uh, the sheer mass of this creature, and you can hear stalactites falling underneath. And as you do, one of the steps causes Walona and uh, Ronan to trip. You see them stumble and fall. And as you reach back, gun, you grab Ronan, just pull him to his feet and push and push forward. As Namari, you were behind Walona as she fell, and you just she barrels into you and you push her forward. And you keep running. I'd like everyone to make another athletics check. Eleven. Other end of the spectrum, natural 20. <laughs> <laughs> so that'll be an 18. Uh, 10 for me. Okay. 13 for me. 9. Okay. 11. Okay. I rolled a 2. And uh, Namari? 11. 11. So <laughs> as you charge this time, the beast Thanks, draws Mary. draws closer in you, into you. Uh, and uh, at this point, it just looks like it is about to bite down on you, Tilly, before a hand appears out of the shadow, 
and you just see the purple of Tristan's arm just pull you and push you forward at this point as the creature's jaw snap down, taking it half of the bridge out with it as it just throws uh, the chunk of stone off into the distance. You hear it clatter down. As you reach the other side and the great stone doors are in front of you, you see they are covered in gold and bronze and they're the dwarven runes in the front uh, speak litanies of the fane and of endless protection to those who reside within this hall and the creature is right behind you now what are you doing i'm sprinting to jaws trying to get him up and so we can get okay, inside make a, strength, make a strength check for me yeah i'm helping uh, okay, doing doing that, that, yeah. i'm gonna unload all five bolts of the revolving crossbow into the beast okay make one attack roll just do it one yeah, attack yeah. Roll with advantage i uh rolled a one you have advantage because till he's happened. i have oh thank fuck uh, while all this is happening, I'm going to cast um, Heroism level 2, finishing the um, charges in the ring on okay. myself and okay. Namari. That okay. was a natural 20 for the second one. Natural 20 for with advantage on my attacks. Can so, I do Radiance of the Dawn as well? Uh, you can, yes. <laughs> yeah. So it's a saving throw on the creature, which it fails. So as... You slam into this door, you shoulder barge into it, gun. You feel it, you, something in your shoulder bends and you're like, for a second, you're like, I've dislocated this, but you feel Tilly's form slam into the back of you and you're like, no, I have to push through and slam once again into this door. And your shoulder pad clangs against it as the door begins to rupture open. Meanwhile, behind you, run and you sw spin, turning, pulling this, the drawstring back on this crossbow you just fire it off repeat 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 as they slam into this creature eyes burst you see teeth are rent from this creature as it howls back is caught by this radiant beam of light which causes it to stumble for a second and you think it's about to fall before the hand bends in such a strange amorphous way that reaches round like a grasping tentacle around the bridge and pulls itself back on and as you do as the door is open behind you the beast just lunges for you. Everybody get in, get the fucking sack, get the fucking sack! Yeah, no, definitely get in. And as, it, as you all run inside, the beast's jaw just slams into it and it's snarling now, snapping at the end of this doorway. Is there any chance that I can try and push the door shut on its maw or is it too strong? You can certainly try. Uh, I'd like to help. I'm casting guidance on, on the <laughs> Okay, so you have advantage. And I have no, guidance. I and there's mouth from my bow. <laughs> Okay, um, hang on. 24. Natural one. <laughs> <laughs> oh! So, as this beast just slamming down, slamming down, you once again barge into this door, and as it begins to slam shut on this creature, you hear this crunch as part of its jaw is snapped underneath the pressure. Oh. You just put both hands into it and just continue to push. And the creature's door is trapped with it. Keep, creature's maw is trapped within this as Tilly is pushing the other door. Both of you keep pushing and keep pushing until the front of this creature's jaw is being crushed by both of these doors. And as you hear this horrible sickening, the creature retracts for a moment as the doors slam shut, leaving you in pitch total blackness. Even with the drift club? Even with the drift club. What was that about cowards, Gun? Okay, yeah, I'm sorry. Tristan, I take it back. I'm not acclimatized to this at all. <laughs> <laughs> yep, you and me both. You and me both. I can't see a goddamn thing. Me neither, and that's new. Yeah. Oh. As, well. as you blink, trying to open your eyes, eventually you hear the sounds of a crackling fire. The smell of roasting pork. You open your eyes. You see a campfire. A pair of small tents, clad in dwarven livery, sit on the edge of the flickering light. You are all sat on a few small logs, and in your midst is a crowned dwarf dressed in fine dwarven chain, arms resting on a heavy axe hilt. The dwarf speaks to you as if you are old friends. Aye! Aye! He's in hunts. I'll be glad when they're over. Ever since the orcs banded together with the giant king who refused to bow to the Odin, we've had our work cut out for us. The mountain's almost not ours again. I'm sure we'll get it back though. What the heck's an Odin? 
Hey. Sorry, bud. Have you... Have you had one too many beers tonight, haven't you? Of course you know what the ordinance is. It's what the giants go by. It's it's their rule of law. It's, you know, it's hierarchical. It's quite basic. It does the job for them, though. Oh, I still look at gun, as in, like, this doesn't make sense to me. Gun. Yeah. She's just, like, doing the fucking white man blink. <laughs> is he speaking Dwarven? Is this Dwarven? I... No, he's speaking... You're not quite sure what language he's speaking. No, that's a, that's a but, character. But I don't you... know what Ordnung is. But you can... Like, you can understand him. What do you think you're talking to right now? Oh, well, you're my good friend, the Mari Elvis. I've known you for 47 years. Then I may have had too much to drink. Uh, remind me, how did we meet? Hey, well, we were both assigned together on mandatory military service. We were outriders. Yeah, we first met each other when uh, you had to save me from an orcish ambush. I'd gotten myself in a little bit too deep. That's where I learned that when you're in combat, you keep your shirt on. Uh, if you knew mm. us all, you'd know I don't drink. Eh, since when? You're the best drinker I know. I once saw you down an entire bottle of North Elven vodka without even so much as gulping once. Tilly, did you fool someone into thinking water was vodka? <laughs> you know, once or twice. <laughs> That's beside the point, though. And me, where did you meet me? Ah, uh, I met you. Well, nursery. We went to nursery together. I've known you my entire life, Gun. Oh, yeah? What's my name? Gunhild Firebraid. Of Clan Avalha. All right. Can I insight check gun there? <laughs> Do you don't need to insight check. She visibly just was like, <laughs> fuck. Yeah, I know. But was, I mean, he said my name as well. Okay, well, th that's all coincidence. I don't know any dwarves, except for Gun. Hey, what are you talking about? You are a dwarf. Okay, I'm gonna look at like myself. Do I still have like stumpy my fingers, hair on the backs of your hands, stout nature? So Gun is like normal height to us now. Yeah. Wait. Yeah. Are you saying she wasn't no. normal in the first place? Because we will have issues. You're shorter than us, for the most part. Oh, but Tilly's oh, taller man. now. Yeah, Tilly is tall. <laughs> Tilly weighs about three and a half times the weight that Tilly weighed before. Oh my god, it's like being on Jupiter. Wait, no, so... But how... Okay, what? I'm very confused. Mm. Same. So, wait, so how do you know me at all, then? Do you know me? I, of course I know you. You're the captain of my guard. Oh. Run and bread for run. I've seen you be able to shoot a crossbow at 200 yards with one hand while drinking with the other. Tilly's going to solve things the way she does when she doesn't know what's happening, which is she's going to get up and hit this man. Yep. Sorry, come on. <laughs> oh. Okay, make an attack roll. Uh, that is... Wow, that's a real bad roll. Um, that's a nine. Okay. So as you go to hit uh, to hit this dwarf, your fist just goes wide and you stumble slightly and just this hand comes out, grabs you and brings you in and is like, oh, I... there, there, Tilly. It's all right. You None of this is right. Bed. It's okay. A good sleep will uh, sort you right out. I, I struggle against him. I'm not going to be like, talked down to. <laughs> hey, don't worry about it. Don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm going to get up and try and walk away from the camp. Yeah. You get up and you walk away. How can I just keep going, or is, do I get stopped? Like, there's no point where you seem to stop. Or you just hear the dwarf say, like, "Eh, where are you going, gun?" Moth for piss. All right, don't piss on the hedgehog. It hurts. 
Okay, because I'm feeling left out here. What's what's the story with us then? Where did, where did we meet? Yeah, I'm not quite sure. You just sort of tag along. All right, fair enough. <laughs> Get fucking <laughs> wrecked. Like... Fair enough. <clears throat> so, like the group. What are we doing here then exactly? Yeah, well, we're hunting Ettons. The giant signed the Ordnin about two decades ago at this point. A group mostly consisting of Ethans and Ogres allied themselves with the Orcs, wanted to take down the Ordnin, said that it would hinder development of the giants. Uh, we're here to help. Where is he, if we're here to help, where is here? Yeah, we're about 20 miles due west of uh, Calres Hawkel on the edge of the Sundering Coast. What year is it? Sorry, I had a little too much to drink. I don't know. What do you know of Calres Hawkel? It's my kingdom. It's I am the fan of Calres Hawkel. Grungil Darkbroken. I've been reigning there for near 40 years at this point. Does he look like one of the statues we saw on the way in? No. Can I attempt to see if this is some sort of like really elaborate illusion? Yeah. You want like, to roll, like, believe? Yeah. Sure. Like, in yeah, the darkness, can, Gun's like slapping herself and like punching <laughs> trees to see if it's real. Make an investigation check. Investigation. I did. Uh, I'm still like struggling. I I investigation. You can, you can roll an athletics check to try and get out of it. Uh, did, did you say guidance on that? Oh, okay. What, what's guidance again? D4. 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 I rolled a seven. Which is really funny. Because when guidance takes an action to cast, which means it takes around six seconds. So you're just there for six seconds, being like. Uh... 25. <laughs> 25 total. Okay. So. Doesn't seem to be an illusion. Seems real. Weirds me out even it more. Passes through anything. It's... Is there any scenery, or is it other than the campfire and? Yeah. You're on the edge of a small forest, which right. Gun has walked into. Uh, you're in the lowlands. Um, there's small hills, rocky outcroppings, bushlands. What are we wearing? What you were wearing before. Just dwarf size. We've got our weapons and stuff. Yeah. Fuck. I come back after a little while, like. Step on a porcupine. Something like that. Hey. Pull it out straight away, right? Mm hmm. Good. I'm not going to walk around with like needles in me for you on about. Yeah, well, it's, you wouldn't be the first if you did. Aye, but anyway, it's late. You best be getting to bed. Got much to do in the morning. Yeah, all right. Let's turn in, everyone. Mm. What was your uh, grapple release check, by the way, Dilly? Oh, six. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> you have a cuddle buddy for the night. <laughs> Grungo just lets go of you and... Heads off into one of the tents. I'm going to sit down and cast a take magic as a ritual. It's, okay. It's the only one I have, but I, uh, mm. I don't like this at all. What the fuck? What, okay, the fuck guys. what the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? As captain of the guard, I would like <laughs> to say that I am not a captain of a guard. Just so everyone's clear, what the fuck? Hmm. And I never grew up with a thane. You're My story kind of checks out. There's a very low chance I'm saving anyone. So. I didn't even bother asking. I didn't want to know. What the you are all supposed to be a lot taller than me. Hey, this yeah. Actually the tallest right now, don't I have to say, you all look good as dwarfs, though. Well, there, I look great all the time. Except you, Tristan. You. Mm. I'm just about to say the same about myself. So you know Tristan's usual facial hair. It's that, but much longer right now. Yeah. It's gone past the point of like semi stylish, you're just creepily like just. It's like, it's really Does long. It have, like, and purple it's just, beads. Like, really comes up like that. The twists at the end. It's it one of those like kinds a... of styles where you see it at a really weird beard like convention. It's like, oh. 
it, that's the only time anything like that it, it's is still, it's still like the goatee but it's like a 12 inch long goatee oh god <laughs> so this well, has to be magic or something right beards style does the detect magic ping anything nope there's no magic here well, oh there must be. yeah i think no. i don't know pretty sure i'm not a dwarf yeah yeah, I know for sure that there is one dwarf here, and that's gone. I do not believe that th this guy is here. I will not accept that. We ran over a bridge, and there was a big doggy thing, right? We, we, mm -hmm. we were all doing yeah, that. Yeah, that happened. Yes. That happened. Yeah, it was just shooting arrows. Heart was going. Thought I was going to have a heart attack. Oh, my eyes were 20 miles. Wait. Uh... Smashing into that door, right, and then like fucking almost dislocating it. I, my shoulder would be like bruised and bumped, right? Yeah, if yeah. I check it now, is it still bumped and bruised? Yeah, yes. Yeah. Okay, so I'll be like, it happened. Good. Yeah, I'll check my uh, crossbow box. It should be empty. Mm -hmm. While everyone's doing that, I'm absent-mindedly braiding the new really long. <laughs> oh, you're making it I'm worse. Thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Gone. I, mm? That the statues we passed, they all had uh, diadem and mm -hmm. had an axe. The thane that was chained up, which died, had a diadem. No axe. No axe. This guy's got an axe. Also had the diadem. Was he one of the statues? No, no. Was is there any way that he could resemble that horrendously chained up thing, like whatever? If it wasn't like a, just a twisted visage, I think we or need maybe. to see where his chest pulled open, guys. <laughs> or that might have been a fake thing. <laughs> But that doesn't explain us being in a forest. Like, this has to be some kind of like, weird mind game thing. Something has happened you know? here. You do all notice yourselves getting kind of tired. Like you've been out for a long day. I think for the time being, we have no choice but to see how this plays out. Mm. Either way, I'm sleeping in my safe bubble. Do, do you mind if we should all sleep in the safe Yeah, place? do you yeah. mind if we all just keep in there? <laughs> we all bubble up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, safety I, hut. Yeah. I, I'll, I'll ritual cast it just in case we get woken up halfway through the night as well. So okay. I do take the time to just... All right. So you spend some time making that, and you all bed down. When you next open your eyes... You're looking over a ridge. You see the rest of the other half of your party is over on a separate ridge. You're split three on one side, four on another side. One of the fane is with one of you. And you see he's pointing down into the sort of small valley between the two of you. And there, there are two uh, large figures with two heads, uh, which are constantly bickering with each other, walking along. Uh, and between them, you see four. Uh, gray-skinned individuals with tusks carrying large axes. One of them is wearing, uh, uh, there was a fifth one of them who's slightly larger than the others, wearing heavy plate armor with a large great axe on his back, uh, pulling along uh, two like quite large wolves on a leash. And the fin's like, hey, on my signal, we take him out. Right, that's the last of the orgs. If we take them out, Leadership will crumble, and there'll be nothing left to do but clean up. You ready? All right. We're in a tent right. just now. I just woke up, so this to... is a very vivid dream. <laughs> right. Hold on then. Crossbow bolts. Oh. Okay. Three, yeah. two, one. Bam. Okay, make an attack. Uh, okay, make an attack. Yeah, yeah. 
when they said crossbar, could I be trying to get mine out as well at the same time? Fine. Uh, who are you shooting? Which of them are you shooting at? The one that looks the, like the leader. The, the play arm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, 23 on one. Yeah, that hits. And 21 on another. That also hits, yeah. Uh, so nine, uh, 13, and then ooh, second uh, one will Colossus slew. Yes, 17, uh, total 30 damage. Okay, what do you roll on your Elvish Blast? Uh, eight, 19 and 22. 19 and what, sorry, 19 and 22. Both hit. So, damage for the first one first? Uh, that would be 19 damage. Okay, so... Uh, the second blast just strikes the dead body of this creature as the two crossbow bolts hit into the front of the target, causing him to twist slightly from the pain, and as he does, the Eldritch Blast strikes him inside the head, and you see it snap completely 90 degrees uh, as the neck, and as it just crumples down, the rest of the uh, creatures pull up bows Instantly, the, the uh, bickering creatures stop. Heads turning around, and I would like a wonder woman initiative. Uh, I did my I, crossbow. Yeah, where are I you? can't use the second blast for. No, because uh, you pick the target. Because when you fire out just blast, you pick every target at the same time. So. Uh, my initiative is like that, guys. Just run out, run out into the world. So did I not get a shot then? Yeah, you do. Take your shot. Oh, yeah. Uh, it was a sixteen to hit. Okay, that uh, against uh, the Etin, just because it's got two heads, and I'm like, oh, that's weird. <laughs> well, Jamie knows it's an Etin. That's yeah. For sake of brevity in this moment, I yeah. used its real name. Uh, does that hit? All right, and then over here is. Really, gun help. All right. Uh, so, uh, twenty-five to twenty. Twenty-three. Same. So you have a dex mod of what? I ha mine is plus three. Same. Okay. More it's again. sixteen. Right. You guys can just choose. Who goes first? Uh, gun can go first. Hey, gun. thank you. I misspelled your name there, Gun. So you're now for this combat, Gum. 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 She was the best Jet Set Radio character, so I'm not even bothered. Uh, 15 to 20. 19. 19 for you, Ro. Uh, and I heard someone else say something there. 18. 18 for Wilona. Uh, okay, and uh, 10 to 15. Good to know. Good to know. Uh, uh, 5 to 10. 9. Also 9. Okay, Eight. Tilly's definitely going first there. Yeah. are going last with a minus one <laughs> which brings us up first to gun you're currently on like a 10 foot high ridge right now looking over this all right 10 foot's no big deal i'm gonna hop down okay um you take four points of falling damage that's no no fine that's nothing um so bloop so does that count as that's like five feet movement? Because I only move forward a bit. Five. Yeah. Ten, twenty, twenty-five, thirty. I'm gonna run to this guy. Yeah. I'm gonna rage. Yeah. Ah! Uh... Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention that you all got a long rest from sleeping. Oh boy. 
Nope. I was going to ask that actually. Yeah, I, I even had it written down here in bold, but I forgot to see it. Damn it, my rings reset. Okay, um, I'm going to do it recklessly. Okay. This is a, yeah, this is not undead the first time. Around. Oh, that's a real good job that I did that because I rolled a one on one of them dice. Okay. Okay, so that is uh, 29 to hit that on the other. Hit. Uh, nine plus seven, sixteen. Uh, eighteen slashing. Uh, so you just run up to this this uh, creature, this what uh, you would know as an orc, mm -hmm. uh, and just carve it down in one strike. It just goes to raise an axe towards you, but as it does, you're quicker than it. You just down and you <laughs> blade comes up and okay. orc falls down. Okay, second um, attack on the puppy. Yep. Um, I've already reckless once. Can I reckless again? Reckless effect. Once you reckless every single attack. All right, from the next round. Gotcha. Okay, uh, that's twenty six to hit. That does hit. Yep. Uh, eighteen again. Eighteen again. Uh, so this time, the, the you s turn to see this wolf growling at you, snarling, uh, and as you you turn and just whoosh, the wolf goes down. Cool. Uh, that will end your turn, which brings us to Tristan. Um, did that 16 to hit before initiative hit the Etin? Oh, yes. Uh, yes, it did. So, roll your damage for that before we get going. Uh, that's going to be uh, six points for that one. Mm -hmm. uh, now, my go. Um, I would like. One. Sorry? Yeah, the closer one. Okay. I'm not that bold. Um, yeah, I'd like to cast Fairy Fire on uh, this particular Etin and see if I can. If I can get up to the wolf as well, great. If not, make sure to get the orc as well, at least. Yeah, yeah you can. I didn't know how much of a large creature had to be. Just has to touch it. it. Right. Okay, so the Ethan gets a natural 20, uh, but the orc and the wolf both fail. Cool. And then I shall... Once again, you just glitter bomb. Yeah. The three of them. Uh, and then... I'll move back to sort of the tree coverage there. Yep. Sort of okay. away from the ridge. All right. This brings us to running. Uh, I will attack this guy twice. Okay. But I'm yep. going to Hunter's Mark him first. Okay. Hunter's Mark. Uh, you do have Colossus Slayer on him for the first okay. hit. He just uh, he got hit by um, Tristan's crossbow. Thunk. That's going to be a big two. A natural 20. It is, yes. Ooh, on the cluster stay a hit as well. With, yeah. So that's 2d10 uh, plus 2d8 plus 2d6. Yes. Plus 6. Or, or 5, depending on what you hold. 5. Plus 5. Plus 2. 29 points of damage. Ooh, very nice. And uh, second bolt. Oh, other end of the spectrum. That's a one. Natural one. So uh, I have a twenty-two one. The the first bolt <laughs> strikes in one of the uh, straight into one one of the creature's heads and it tears open the cheek and lodges itself in the back of this creature's mouth. And as it does, it howls out in pain. And the other head surprisingly laughs at him. So it just one of the heads just ah, and the other one's like <laughs> and just then just turns over to look at you. Uh, as the second bolt whizzes past his head. And that will bring us to Willow. Alrighty, so I'm gonna do something real fun. Uh, if I measured it out correctly, which I believe I did, we're okay. gonna cast Fireball. Okay, so that's gonna hit all five of them, right? Yes. Okay, so... Oh, I need to get my pieces out. <laughs> so, top orc passes with a natural 20. Mm -hmm. uh, the wolf passes with a six, 17. Uh, that orc fails. That orc fails, and the Ethan fails. So, uh, the bottom three fail, and the top two pass. Alrighty. Time for some 86. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. So that's 10, 15, 25. 
25 points of damage. So, uh, the uh, instantly the two orcs near the bottom are completely evaporated. You see the wolf and the other orc try and get out of the way, but they're caught on the blast and thrown off their feet. Just you hear them clatter to the ground in a broken mass of charred and burnt corpses. The Etten at the back you see is scorched up the side. Uh, one entire head, like half of it, is just burnt away. The hair is gone from the mass of this firewall, just rocking it to one side. Almost all of the reading party is gone at this point. Uh, and that will end your go, unless you'd like to move. Nope, I'm good. Which brings us to Tilly. Uh, I think Tilly's like a little confused, because we, we were questioning how real this was a couple of moments. Well, not a couple of moments ago, before we slept. And now everyone seems to be like playing along. Um, so I think I'm just gonna like carefully climb down and maybe okay. like take cover behind these bushes. Okay. Okay. And that will bring us to Namari. I am going to move my hex to this guy. Okay. And attack. Both blasts. One is a natural 20. <laughs> okay. And the other is 19. 19. Mm -hmm. Okay, they both hit. Obviously, the first one hits. It's 22 plus 5. Uh. 27 for the first. 27 for the first one. Wow. Max damage too in one of them. And the second one is uh, 12. 12, okay. So as both balls strike into this creature, you, for a moment you feel it's about to fall, but one head uh, looks over to the other, reaches up and slaps the other one awake and goes, Whoa! and the other, the other arm and leg comes back to life again and is lunges up back up straight again but at this point it's just almost completely out cold as this creature it's being held together purely by the fact that it has two brains it's more than you can say of most people <laughs> what more than most people um which will bring us to there you go and this one is going to barrel towards you gun and this one is also going to barrel towards you because no one else went down so the first one is going to strike at you. Two attacks. More well, than. And With attack. advantage, because I was reckless. Yes. Uh, that's a good job, because there's a natural one on that, uh, which has ended up being a 20 to hit. Yep. Put in words. Okay. I just call out to one of the uh, heads. Hold up, hold up. Oh. Hold up, where are you? Like oh, oh, is it a case of I'll need to be able to see him? No, no, it's distance. Oh, is it distance. 60 or 30 feet? Uh, cutting words out. Sorry. I would check. Cutting words is... Uh, 60. Yeah, 60. Okay, you're in range then. Cool. I'll just call out to one of the heads. Um, uh, none of them have spoken yet, ever, so I can't use their voice. It's not been a minute. Yeah, I'll just call out to one of the heads and go, Hey, look left! And to the one on the right. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> uh, and that's going to be minus seven to the attack roll. That won't okay. hit. So the, the one on the right goes, Huh? Thunk. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the second attack. Ooh. Uh, yeah, try cutting ones. That one, yeah, bugger. Okay. Uh, that's going to be a 25 to hit. Yeah. The Morning Star. Oh, that sounds nice. So that's 14 points of piercing damage. Halved, is... yeah. Yeah. And the other one's going to make two attacks against you as well. Uh, the first one is a 20 block. Mm hmm. Uh, and the second one is a 16. Yep. So the battle axe. Uh, Sixteen, uh, half to eight. Yep. And then eleven, half to five. Okay. So you just 
axe and and uh, Morningstar slam into you, but you remain firm and strong. And that will bring us to the top of the round again, which is your go. Okay, uh, which one looks the weakest? The one the on my right? The great one, yes. Yeah, okay. Then I am going to do a incredible vertical leap that we all know Gun is capable of. And I'm going to try to bisect Chogal. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna do it recklessly as well, cause you know oh. it's a dream. Well, <laughs> I can't die in a dream. Um, that would be sixteen to hit. Uh, that does hit, yeah. Oh, okay. Eleven slashing damage. Okay, so as you just carve straight into the stomach of this one, you see that gelatinous fat just begins pouring out. There's that horrible, viscous inside the creature. And it goes over with a and you remain firm. Even though the ground around you just bounces. It's the knees. That's where all the power comes from. It's the knees. Like, uh, so... a, like a mobile skier. <laughs> yeah. Just spin around and same for this guy. Uh, which will be a 28 to hit. That does hit. Hey, this belt is the best thing I've ever gotten, by the way. Uh, 14 slashing damage. That does hit. That does do damage, I mean. Hey, that will end your go, as you just carve into the second creature now. Brings us to Tristan. I will move back up there, and uh, how how rough is it looking? Uh, it doesn't look bloodied yet. It still works mostly now. Uh, second level dissonant whispers. Wisdom okay. save. All right, wisdom. A wisdom save. Uh, yeah, wisdom. Oh, better at these than I thought. Oh no, that's not good. That's a nine. Yeah, that's a fail. Uh, so that's four d6 psychic damage, and it must move immediately as far away as possible. Okay. And pretty sure it incurs attack of opportunity. But it does. It's one of the only things in the game that does do that. I should have done it. You get an attack of opportunity gun. Because uh, I attacked recklessly, does that still count? Yes. <laughs> um, 28. Uh, no, 18, sorry. That does hit. Uh, uh, 13 slashing damage. 13 slashing damage. Okay. At this point, as Gun carves into it once more, it begins to look weaken. Well, it also gets uh, 18 points of psychic damage. Jesus Christ. So that's 16 from you. Was it 16 from you? Plus. It was 13 you, from me. 13. 13 plus 18, right? Yeah, 18 from me. Okay. Jeez. Um, okay. All right. It worked finally. Yeah. So uh, as it runs screaming away, gun, you just carve at its leg, and it stumbles for a moment, uh, looking very wounded. Which brings us to you, run. Mines. I'm gonna try and uh, long boot. Okay. Uh, that's gonna be a sixteen to hit. That does hit. Yep. You do get the closest there. Uh, yep, you gotta get my long boot dice out. Uh, oh, I didn't move my hunter's mark there yet, so. Uh, that's gonna be nine, 13 points. Yep. And uh, I'll fire the second one and just for the crack. Yep. Well, maybe I won't. That's an 11. That hits. <laughs> That's a one on the day, so that's five damage. So the first arrow sinks into one head, the second arrow sinks into the other head, and the creature sinks into the ground. Yeah. Nice. Are you guys keeping track of how many things Ronan kills? Because you should at this point. It's becoming Ronan, a pattern, isn't it, really? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, as the captain of the guard, it's my job. <laughs> <laughs> 
at this point, um, Grungill hops down from the ridge. He's like, I, I didn't even get to have a go. Ah, I hate you guys sometimes. He walks over to them and he's like, he's like, ah, well, time for our treasures, eh? He starts picking through all of the corpses and you see he's picking through the corpse of the um, armoured figure. He's like, ah, what's this? And you see he holds up a large circular lantern. <gasps> hey. Well, that's very pretty, isn't it? He says he holds it in his hands now. It glows with this pristine white light. Oh, yeah. I do like that a lot. Does it look divine in nature? It does. And as darkness fades into your vision once again, the next time your vision awakes, you see more raining parties, more lanterns in the spoils. You witness a lantern being created. You see a celestial creature is pulled from the ether and forced into the lantern that glows with this pristine light. The circle court arranged are congratulating as if they're doing a deed of great scientific advancement as they trap this small uh, celestial creature within this lantern form. And eventually you see the High Tinger putting the finishing touches on this large bell-like lantern which has these beautiful uh, openings around it. And you hear the Fane say to you all, Hey! Well, that's good enough to hold what that's supposed to be in there. What is supposed to be in there? Darkness Fuck. phase one more. Your question met with no ears. You simply hear another voice, twisted and malformed, but very familiar to be that of the fanes you hear. You cannot take it. It is mine. And that's where I went in that session. God damn it. <laughs> oh, no. He's so cute and he got corrupted. <laughs> no. Quite literally, potentially, god damn it. Yeah. So. Did you guys enjoy that? Was that fun? I don't want it. <laughs> I got ridge I got goosebumps though. all over at that last part. It was a, that was awesome. That was fucking great. That bridge mm -hmm. bit. Bridge was rad. The power was, of power was faster. <laughs> I think I was ready to turn around and have a go there, but uh, we managed to get away. No, I feel like that about the decision to run. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I had the stats for it. And I had like 467 hit points. Literally, the only reason I was ready to have a go is because the ring was just fully charged right now. <laughs> <laughs> Hyping <been spot. laughs> oh, no. uh, So, yeah. Um... I hope you everyone enjoyed that. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, as usual, uh, we're here every Monday, pretty much, uh, 8 p.m. GMT. If you first time tuning in and you enjoyed this and you want to catch up, uh, the link will be in the chat. You can go to Susie's YouTube channel and catch up. If you like this, please do let us know um, in any way that you can, whether that be uh, messaging us on Twitter, my handles are below, or leaving a comment, whatever it may be. We do just want to hear that you like this just because we, we, we want to know that we're doing a good job because we're horrible people that fire on compliments. <laughs> uh, of course, this isn't the only thing that Susie does on her channel, D&D uh, related as well. Uh, there is Fight Club, which is every other Wednesday, which will be this Wednesday, um, which includes uh, Jamie, who plays Tristan, and Lydia, who plays Namari, um, as well as myself, although I might not be there this week. Um, you can catch that. It's a Curse of Stride game. Uh, lots of vampires. Um, lots of Guy Fieri references, much to Susie's dismay. All the Guy Fieri references, really. Yeah, all of them. It's a pretty well, I mean, spicy game. Now you've got Stride bucks, game. so. Yeah. Uh, so if you enjoy that sort of thing, a little um, more interesting Curse of Stride game. Uh, <laughs> that's one way to put it. Do tune into that. Um, that is also at 8 p.m. GMT on Wednesdays. 
Um, aside from that, Susie streams every night apart from Thursdays on this channel right here. Um, she streams from 8 p.m. to 11 p.m. Uh, about this same time as this game goes on. Uh, she does games, art streams. She's currently doing uh, not from Critical Role, uh, the new campaign, which uh, she's looking great already. Uh, as well as that, uh, a good man, Stevie, the kill stealing uh, ranger, Ronan, uh, streams almost every night as well on his channel uh, from 11 p.m. till one or two ish. Um, which is. Hey, funnily enough, he kill steals in that too in PUBG. So, he you know. Does. It's a fiend. Uh, yeah. Not I good enough to get his own that. kills, so he steals everybody else's. I sure do. <laughs> and I also bump up the stats of people by giving them kills where they're allies, but they kill me. Yeah. Gonna say. Oh, yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. That's big. But yeah, make sure to check uh, Stevie over on twitch.tv forward slash John Jinxie. Uh, aside from that, does anyone else have anything they'd like to plug? Some will already know about the uh, Dungeons and Dragons game I'm going to run on the 13th of April, Friday the 13th, in Edinburgh's Haunted Underground Vaults. Um, ship, the link should go live soonish. Uh, I'll be using my Twitter to keep everyone up to date. Um, so. Have a look, half past hermit. That's me. If you always wanted to play D and D, an actual haunted location. What could go wrong? What could go wrong, indeed. So, if that sounds like you'll take it, do check that out. But aside from that, if no one else has anything to say, uh, we, we will catch you guys. Wait, 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 wait! Aaron's game. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. I gotta plug it every week. <laughs> I have an idea of a visual plug for it, and it's going to be terrible. Oh, oh no, here we, here we go. Oh, God. Oh, here God. we go. Oh, God. Flavor hat. play with I'm a hat. Okay. I mean, oh, my. <laughs> okay. yeah. I'm not doing it now. Yeah. Yeah. Go buy <laughs> a hat in time. Available on all major platforms and PC, Xbox One, PS4. PS4? Also, also, also on Good Old Games. Also no. on Good Old Games. <laughs> Don't touch me. <laughs> Uh, and that's that's a hat with time, not a hat <sighs> in time. Well, so. the, the watch isn't all the way around. Up. That's a mistake, is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you guys next week. Can you carry on? You want to yeah. cut the stream, Susie? <laughs> it's got.